hello, hello! What's up tonight, everyone? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Fine Thursday evening to all of you. Verma MX, Chilbo Swaggins, Sinto, Autumn Shank, Felrek, Wanderer. What's up, everyone? I'm back. I have a headset. I don't sound echoey, hopefully. I don't know. I just started using this headset. It just came in the mail, so hopefully I sound normal again. Turbo Janks Bank, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big Scoops cheer for our new subscriber. Yeah, I think we're back. I think we're back with the headset. Got my beautiful voice <laughs> back working properly. Uh, how is everyone this evening? DC Sports, Verma MX, Abysmal Fury, Chilbo Swaggins. Again, I think I already got you. Minister Dr. Trunkin' Duck and MTG Goldfish. Oh. <laughs> That's me, future IDK Nightbot, of course. Uh, what is up, everyone? I'm super excited. So, I wasn't sure what we were going to play tonight. Yeah, I mean, I never sound normal, but normal for me. <laughs> the Yeti mic sounded better. Interesting. I think you're in the minority as far as thinking the Yeti sounds better. But, yeah, you got two tonight. <laughs> Doubled up on the shout-out. Uh, what's up, Glebis? Phil... Phil... Dildo? <laughs> Professional butt herder. Uh, Libero... Liberin Rhino. Welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big Soup's here for our new subscriber. Oh, man. It's been quite the day. So, we're almost done with spoilers for Master 25. Set is looking interesting. I'm sure we'll talk about it as we go along tonight it's yeah i got my headset it came in the mail this afternoon so it's back it's back i always use the same headset so it's really a freak thing i bought a headset when i first got a better ish headset it was a gamecom 788 and i liked how it sounded so whenever my headset breaks i buy another of the same one because i really like it hey awesome to have you l r rico so let's do some reminders talk a little bit about the deck we're playing tonight then we can talk about Masters 25, we can talk about big tournament. I'm really excited. So this is probably going a little under the radar with Masters 25 and all that stuff, but tomorrow kicks off the Magic Online Championship, which is actually a really high EV event. There's tons of really good pro players. It's a really high value tournament, and it's the first big modern tournament since the unbanning. So I'm super excited to see what happens with that tournament. That starts tomorrow. Not sure what time. I I think it's on the West Coast, so it's probably like 1 Eastern or something, and goes through the weekend. It's like the Pro Tour Invitational type thing of Magic Online. Uh, it is invite only. It's only 12 people. You have to win multiple qualifiers. You got to win a monthly tournament. Then you have to win, uh, well, you have to win like a... Yeah, you got to win a monthly Mox tournament or a last chance qualifier to get in. And if you don't have enough qualifier points, you got to win a pre-tournament to get into the monthly tournament. So it's actually really hard. And it's almost all Platinum Probes. There's so many of the best players in Magic that qualified this year. So it should be interesting. Uh, yes, there should be a Rough Drafts for Legacy Cube. Also should be another Playing Pauper coming back soon. Thank you for the cheer, Humcom. Anyway, yeah, I'm rooting for Nassif too. I love I love Nassif. It's so awesome to have Nassif back actually streaming i don't have time to watch that many streams but i leave them on in the background when i'm like editing videos and stuff and a lot of times it's nasif that i find myself watching i just i love watching nasif play magic even though he's like the slowest player in the world anyway reminders and then we'll talk about the deck then we'll start playing our league so maybe we can get in some momir tonight then we can talk magic online championship we can talk master 25 we can talk the story of my headset <laughs> Whatever y'all want to talk about. So Replay YouTube. That's where you can find all the old streams, including this stream in the future. Normal YouTube, if you missed it, Against the Odds turned out a lot sweeter than I thought we were going to have it turn out. We played Against the Odds last night, playing some Starfield Paradox, and the deck was actually pretty sweet. So keep an eye out for that. Also, all the Masters 25 videos, Commander Clash tomorrow. We have a interesting, <laughs> dubious challenge. Much of brew uh, coming up on Sunday. So it, that, that one's going to be interesting let's say and a sweet standard budget magic coming out on monday which i'm really excited for the deck i actually really want to play the deck on stream because i feel like the deck is actually pretty legit i was surprised how competitive it was so i don't know maybe next week we'll be able to uh play it anyway merch page tokens t-shirts play mats other ways to support the stream and the channel and the site keep an eye out for that if you're looking for a way to support donations available down below if you want to contribute definitely not required always appreciated two bucks 
bucks or more gets your message right on stream. Anyway, so our deck tonight is Bloodbraid Ponza, and I wasn't sure what I wanted to play tonight. I wasn't sure, so I asked on Twitter, and a surprising number of people said Bloodbraid Ponza. I don't know why, but apparently... Apparently, people want to see Bloodbraid Ponza, so we are playing Bloodbraid Ponza. I would like my Bloodbraids to match, please, Magic Online. Ugh. Wait. Oh, I see. All right, yeah, get rid of those. Bring in those. Now we have matching blood braids. So the idea of this deck is pretty simple. We're looking to blow up a lot of land. So the idea is we got all ramp on turn one. Arbor Elf, Birds of Paradise, Utopia, Sprawl. This on turn two gets us to our land destruction. We have Blood Moon to shut down non-basic lands, which then allows us to turn our Stone Rains, our Molten Rains, our Acid Mosses on our opponent's basic lands. And then we finish off the game with Thundermaw Hellkites, which most people play Storm Breath. I'm on the Thundermaw Hellkite plan because I feel like it's really good at sniping Jaces. Inferno Titans to close out the game. Bloodbraid, of course, can cascade into all this stuff. Blood Moon, Stone Rains, Molten Rains, Mana Dorks, hopefully not, but sometimes. We also have a Corsair just to kind of control our draws, gain a little bit of life. Tireless Tracker for more card draw, just a really good threat, good thing to cascade into. White Bordered Basics, essential when you're playing Ponza because already going to like tilt the opponent a little bit so you might as well go all the way play the white border lands just really push the opponent over the edge and then as far as the sideboard a lot of normal stuff we have Fracturing Gust to deal with Boggles and Affinity, Anger of the Gods for Creature Decks, Ancient Grudge, Abrade, Boggles, Affinity, Lantern Control, Pithing Needle for Jaces and whatnot, Relics for Graveyards, Kitchen Figs for Aggro. The sweetest card, though, is Trinisphere. Trinisphere, oh, Go Fiesta. Go Fiesta, you are by far the most consistent donator. I need to pull up uh, Streamlabs, though, so I can read it. Pulling it up, Coker MDG for the 15th month in a row. Welcome back to the Fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big Scoops here for our resubscriber. I have a Sendled Budget Ponza Monicon, which play one... Why play one of my tier decks when I can destroy lands? Oh, Pon uh, Ponza Monicon is so much fun to play. It really is a blast to play. Thank you so much for the donation, Goat Fiesta. Sarah Longmore, welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big Scoops here for our new subscriber. So, Trinisphere is super, super, super sweet in this deck. If you've never seen Trinisphere in play it's very convoluted but basically everything costs at least three mana there's no way around it no matter what you're gonna do you want to arbor elf it's three mana you want to force a will with its alternate cost it's three mana you want to delve a tassiger you like no matter what you do it's gonna cost three mana it makes it very hard to cast anything for less than three mana uh disregard the delve example i might be wrong on that but that's because turn sphere is so complicated but the idea is we play it that we blow up lands it could just hard lock opponents out of doing anything it's great against storm it's great against lantern control anything that's looking to cast cheap spells we could just keep them from playing magic period forever and it is so much fun for us not for our opponents el rico for the third month in a row loving the streams thanks for all the amazing content well thank you for the subscription big scoops here for our new subscriber so that's what we got going on tonight blood Ray ponza uh someone asked about fracturing gus blowing up our enchantments yes it does it's a little bit of a non-bow but fracturing us also just like say like we don't really care if we're beating boggles or affinity a deck like that it's worth it to lose our utopia sprawls because there's not really another card that's going to do what our fracturing gust does i have an extra land how many lands am i supposed to have so this deck actually let me let me pull this up let me pull up some uh some examples here let's see how many lands am i playing is it supposed to be 22 lands oh Whoa, 21 lands, good lord. 22 lands. 21 lands. 22 lands. All right, oh, we have a new donation. Gab... Uh, Gabba Sassid with the $5 donation. Hey, Seth, I've been playing for a while. I just started an MTGO today. My first league went 1-4 with Mono Red, unfortunately, but I'm drafting right now. But I was wondering, since you live in Western New York, is it called Soda or is it called Pop? Uh, I say Soda. I, I don't I know if I've ever said pop. I mean, maybe, but soda is the preferred nomenclature. <laughs> Thank you so much for the donation. All right, so we could, I guess we can cut one land. So we'll cut a forest, add in a, another land destruction spell. Is that the right? Do we have less mana dorks in those decks? 
I don't have another matching Stone Rain. That's a vote against Stone Rain. We would have to play not matching art. We could just add in one more birds. Uh, uh. Okay, we'll we'll play a lucky Stone Rain. A lucky white bordered ninth edition Stone Rain. So we'll know when we draw the extra Stone Rain, because it'll be the white border one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll run it like that. We'll go down one land at the request of uh, the chat. I think you are right. It does seem like most of the most of the decks are playing 21 to 22 lands, so 23 is probably a little much. I'm actually unreasonably excited for this. I just love blowing up lands. I could probably go 0-5 with this deck, and I would still have – I would just have so much fun because blowing up opponent's lands is just – it's so good. Not matching is the best way to call salt among the opponents. Yeah, but then that also tilts me a little bit. It actually really bother. Wait. Wait? Are we supposed to be waiting? Add main deck ooze? I, I don't know if we, need, uh, if we need main deck ooze. I really do love blowing up lands. I really do. And we got Blood Moon, and also Storm Breath is sweet, and Inferno Titan sweet. This deck just has so many sweet cards. It, it has so many cool things happening. What do you, uh, what do you think Gorio's Ven- or do you think Gorio's Vengeance will be in Master 25? It's expensive and rising in popularity, also on flavor, with the legendary creatures in the set. Uh, I don't know if it could be in it or not. There's only, I think, four rare slots left, so there's not very many. But I think it is missing black rares. I haven't actually looked at, like, the number crunch to know what letter it is or whatever. Like, you can kind of narrow it down, so it could be Gorio's Vengeance. I think I've seen speculation of, like, pack rat. There's, like, a P, a black P rare <laughs> that is apparently still missing. We'll play first. Oh, boy. Oh, this is this is the draw. This is the draw. Turn to Moon Moon, yes, and Moss. <laughs> or Blood Moon. I mean, we just have all kinds of great options. White Bordered Forest, Arbor Elf. All right, opponent, you better have a fatal push. Talon, welcome to the fishbowl. Oh, thank you for your subscription. Big Scoop's here for our new subscriber. Uh, yeah, life is life is good. Life is a little bit good. Let's play Forest. Play Utopia Sprawl on red. We will tap. We will untap. We will tap. We will... Uh... Uh, it's probably right to Blood Moon, actually, and try to blow up a basic. But, eh, I mean, this is just, it's too good not to do. Ah! <laughs> ah turn two kill! Turn two kill! <laughs> yes, yes, we are off to a good start with Fonza. <laughs> we got him, we got him. <laughs> That was the fastest scoop. We didn't even barely have time. We still have the greed border around our stompy ground. We didn't even have time to choose if we wanted it tapped or untapped. Our opponent was that quick on the scoop button. <laughs> uh, all right. On the sideboarding. Uh, all right, opponent. What are you doing? I'm assuming there's some sort of blue-white control deck. Oh, the salt. The salt is real with Ponza. Yeah, I mean, considering our opponent scooped, it was probably the right play. Even though technically Blood Moon is probably the right play most of the time, but oh, that was that was pretty good. Yeah, we didn't really get to see much of what our opponent's doing. Like, I would probably be interested in like Relic of Progenitus, but honestly, if it's a control deck, just constant land destruction is pretty good against control decks anyway. Uh, Gregory, for the ninth month in a row, welcome back to the Fishbowl. Thanks for the awesome content. Can you say Seth sings Syndicate Seinfeld songs? Sitting, shifting, scooping. I think I actually said that pretty good, and you didn't even trick me into saying any, uh, any curse words by accident. <laughs> so we're, we're doing better. Yeah, I don't even, I still don't know how to say that. I usually just say Acid Moss, or I just mumble something that roughly starts with the letter M. Acid Moss. And hope that no one notices. All right, we'll run it back. Hey, Seth, the other night I asked for fun deck suggestions, and you said you needed an idea of what I play normally. So right now I play Ponza in Modern, Burn in Legacy. Any suggestions for a fun modern deck? Um, so if you like, uh, 
you like Ponza. I mean, Ponza's already pretty fun. Okay, I mean, this hand's pretty good. If our opponent doesn't have counters, we have turn to Blood Moon. Celestial Colonnade. Well, what if it crack it? Grab a Forest and Utopia Sprawl on, I guess, Red. Pass the turn. So we're just hoping our opponent plays a tap land and then we win? That would be sweet. Flooded Strand. Oh, they're gonna play Search for Iskanta! They're gonna do it, they're gonna do it. Oh, they're too greedy. The greediest opponent. Oh, no, just kidding. Blown out. Uh, er, er, er. Yeah, that was, that was bad. Opponent, <laughs> hoisted by our own petard. Opponent with the land destruction. Yeah, Simeon Spirit guy coming back is pretty sweet. All right, let's try this again. Utopia Sprawl. On... Ugh, what do we even name? I guess green? If they play another Spreading Seas, we're going to be scooping. <laughs> All right, Serum Visions. Oh, that Spreading Seas really got us. Yeah, well, it works because Utopia Sprawl can only enchant forests. So once it turns into an island, it has to fall off. <sighs> um, I mean, I guess we're just playing Blood Moon and hoping. Opponent got a counter. Oh, dear. Well, we get to be on the play for game three, which is good. Oh, my goodness. Mooney is Shishashuan for moderator. So you can call it moderator acid moss. All right, opponent taps out for a Jace. Come on, land. This is not going well. Um, Blow up the ghost quarter. Yeah, this is not ideal. Opponent's gonna get to flip the Jace. Oh, we really needed a land there. Cycles cast out. Uh, Pons is a is a somewhat tier deck, but this is it's similar to a build that Team Channel Fireball played on Team Modern Super League, but it is not exactly that. Yeah, we're just gonna get buried under counters. We needed well, there's a land. I'll play the land. Ugh. I don't have high hopes of this working, but as in Moss. Opponent cracks. We're going to get cryptic commanded. Uh, we're 0-0 zero, zero right now. We're up a game in this match, but we're in pretty bad shape in this game in specific. I Well, maybe we needed our extra land that we took out. Cryptic going to bounce our land. Oh, this is just, this is brutal. This is as brutal as it gets. Played it in IQ last weekend and went 3-3. Three, 3-3 three. Three, three is not horrible. Takes up the Jays. Field of Ruin. Well, play Stomping Grounds, untapped. Molten Rain, Colonnade. More cryptics? Oh, this is the worst. Yeah, we're we're kinda just getting Oh, okay. Field of ruin. Well, I guess we take a mountain. What is what is our opponent doing here? Is this like the tricky counter spell? Logic not. Okay. We're just going to lose to this Jace. Ugh. So many counters. How would you recommend getting ready for Legacy Cube Draft? <laughs> oh, all right. Opponent's playing uh, Blue White Super Friends, apparently. 
Jay's coming down. Opponent's gonna serum visions. Yeah, we're. I think we're just out of luck. Man, it feels like we should be extremely heavily favored in this matchup. Especially when we're on the play, but. Yeah, Blood Moon doesn't even do anything, so we'll play Tireless Tracker, pass the turn. But this one, this one's over. I don't even know if there's a reason to keep playing with our opponent having this many Planeswalkers. Karja, welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big Soup's here for our new subscriber. Love the streams. I am still in the dumps about what to play in the PPTQ this weekend. Testing online has been interesting. Of course, it's not conclusive. I'm choosing between Red White Approach, Blue White Approach, and Abzan Acquisition. What do you think? Oh boy. Man, so many Planeswalkers, so many Jaysas. Brainstorms. Yeah, I don't know how we get out of this from here. I really don't. We don't even have mana for Thunder Maw. Uh, I do not know what approach variant is best. Pony gets to set it up, get something with Narza. It's Detention Sphere, Fetch Land. Yeah, I think we're pretty much to the, the scoop it up part of the game. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know if it's worth continuing to play here. Yeah, I don't think there's any way we can win from here. So Caleb jammed this deck before. Pretty sure Bloodbraid into Molten Rain. Yeah, Bloodbraid into Molten Rain is pretty sweet. Well, the good news is we're on the draw, and now we know what our opponent's doing, so we can bring in these Pithing Needles, which are going to be pretty good. Uh, what we're going to go down is actually a pretty good question. I'm not 100% sure what we should be cutting. But we really just want ramp spell land destruction. The overlay is correct, except uh, we, ch we dropped one land and added one stone rain. Oh, yeah, somehow it is correct. Yeah, I think that is correct. Um, I don't, I don't know which is better between the approach decks, Crux Delta. I think the Abzan Acquisition deck is super sweet, but I haven't actually played it. I would probably play that one because I think it's sweet, but, um, I actually don't know which one is best for winning a PTQ. I mean, we really want turn one ramp. Like, our best thing to do in this matchup is just to destroy a land on turn two. I mean, Courser, Tracker, those are all good control cards. Ooh, thank you for the cheer. Thank you, uh, Alara Unborn. Uh, all of our cards are good in this matchup. That's the that's the biggest problem we got. Our land destruction is good. Thunder Maw's a, a Planeswalker Sniper. Bloodbraid's a Planeswalker Sniper. This feels like it should just be our best matchup. I guess we can, like, maybe go down one one Titan and one Acid Moss. Try it like that. Draken for the 17th month in a row. And the Mike Arnold for the 15th month with the BB Panza. Welcome you both back to the Fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big Scoops here for our new subscriber. Oh, man, this is so close. I mean, we got to keep it and hope that we draw a land, I think. Uh, we're one land short from this being, like, our ideal draw. So, Masters 25, we're playing blue-white control. Uh, I think we got to keep it. If we hit a land, it's great. So we're gonna keep. If we, the problem is the spreading seas. If we don't hit a land and we're forced to Utopia Sprawl, we're open to spreading seas on turn two. The Friendly Pineapple and Kinokin. Welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you for your subscriptions. Come on land, Big Scoops here for our new subscriber. Yeah, this is, this is bad. Well, Utopia Sprawl on green. 
Uh, pass the turn. Yeah, we're going to lose. We're done. Now our opponent's counters are all online. We didn't get to blow up a land. Yep, here comes Spreading Seas. And now we are probably going to lose. Yep. Well, do we draw land? Well, we do draw land. We are definitely going to get down this Blood Moon first. I mean, I guess we can... All right, use birds. Use birds. Ugh. We'd have to Utopia Sprawl on red? And then if our birds dies, we can't Courser? Moon's gotta be better, I think. Hey, thank you, Iggy Boy. I mean, the problem is they can leave up, they can leave up counter magic next turn. Bolt Bistraveski with a three dollar donation out here in Amish, smoking big doinks in Amish. Uh, I have no idea what that means, but thank you for the donation. The um, the question is, can we Utopia Sprawl? I think we got a moon. The question is, can we Utopia Sprawl first? But we'd have to set it on red, and then if our birds dies, we wouldn't have coarser mana. I guess that's fine. We're gonna do it. So Utopia Sprawl, our Aya Forest. On red. Blood Moon. Ship the turn. Hope our opponent doesn't have too many basics in hand. Ugh! Opponent with more islands. <laughs> more blood moons. Uh, well, let's... I think... Hmm. I think we're gonna course her. Opponent cycles. Okay. All right. There's Wooded Foothills. Ooh, and Thundermaw on top. All right. All right. Things are shaping up. We hit our land drop. We actually have Thundermaw mana for next turn if they get down a Planewalker. And we're getting close to blowing up some more lands. These islands, since we have ba non basics la uh, locked down. And our opponent didn't counter the Courser. So I think, I think we might have got there. Whew, I was a little nervous. Crucible. All right, so our opponent can get back their islands from the graveyard. Plays a mountain. Well, I mean, I think we just go for it. Thunder Maw, get in for a billion. They are far away from Wrathing at the moment. And another, another 100 Thunder Maul is just lethal. That's lethal next turn. Opponent passes. Discards to hand size. Oh, I think we're doing it. Acid Maw's on top. Yeah, I mean, make them counter it if they can. If you got to counter you. Oh, no counter. Is our opponent just dead? That's 12. I mean, that's 12 points of damage coming across. You got no white mana. Game? Whoo, Ponza! We got there. Whoo! Oh, the Thunder Maws. Oh, the Thunder Maws coming through for Exaxes. Uh, that went that went pretty well. We definitely Ponza our opponent. <laughs> oh, yes. Blood Moon and Land Destruction. It goes very well together. Up to 1-0 with Ponza. Maybe maybe we'll be able to feed the kids tonight. <laughs> Gotta feed the children. Ooh, alrighty. That was sweet. That was, that was pretty sweet. Crime and Stereo for the 14th month in a row. Welcome back to the Fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big Soup's here for our new subscriber. Green Red Devotion post unbans. Ooh, Blood Raid Devotion. 
I wonder how Bloodbraid is in that deck. I guess hitting like Wistful Selkie and Eternal Witness is pretty sweet. That looks pretty solid. Uh, the Funky Oboe for the 13th month in a row. Welcome back to the Fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big Scoops here for our new subscriber. Yeah, this deck is good at uh, bringing out the salt. Whew. Horde of Wheels Tribal. That is some Commander Spice. More donations. Thank you so much, everyone, for the donations. From Moldy Ace, $5. Hey, Seth, a poem for you. Humans are sane. Vampires are mental. Our market research shows that players like really like long card names, so we made this card have the absolute longest card name ever elemental. That's uh, that's pretty good, Moldy Face. <laughs> oh, thank you for the donation. Uh, so what are you all thinking about Masters 25? Where are you at with the set? Hmm. Alright, I mean, we're gonna keep this. We need one more mana source for Acid Moss. If we draw a red source, we get to blow up a land. Worst case, we just track her next turn. Thank you for the cheers, Serlo Gamings. Watching your videos got me back into MTG. Keep up the good work. That is amazing. Looks good. It's meh. Boo. Meh. Garbo, meh. Iconic Masters 2.0. Why is the tree the green mythic? <laughs> so where I'm at with with Masters 25 is I think it looks like one of the sweetest master sets. And I really truly mean that. I am very excited for limited. I like the nostalgia. Uh Ferizzi, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big scoops here for our new subscriber. Uh so yeah, so I really like that. I'm a little bit skeptical of uh, of the value, so that's what I'm nervous about. It feels like there's a lot of low value stuff. Are we going to do any cube on stream? Ugh, forest. All right, well, play the forest. Play tireless tracker. Would have been nice to just blow up land, but tracker's fine. Pass the turn. So yeah, that's, and people, I think people are misunderstanding what I'm saying, some people, about Masters 25. It's not that I'm saying, oh, you need to be able to make money if you open a box. It's not about that at all. It's more, uh, it's more about, I think people really would love to be able to draft Masters 25 over and over and over again. But if you're paying $40 or something for a draft, and you're only getting like $10 of cards if you don't get lucky and open a high-end card. You're going to have you're going to have a really hard time continuing to draft. That's I think that's my concern. Well, play the forest, get a clue. Get in with our tireless tracker. And I mean, we got to just fire off acid moss. Our opponent could very well be able to counter it, but we got to Let's make sure we didn't click our own land. All right. We'll see. Do they have a counter? They do. Oh, it's a, <laughs> it's a remand. All right. Pass the turn. Yeah, that's what I would like to see. Is it drop to like $7 a pack? And then drafts could be like 20 or $25. Even if Wizards had to include a little bit less value in the set. Like, maybe you can't have quite as many high-end cards or something. I still think people would be happier if they could draft it cheaper. What do you got, opponent? They know we still have Asinmaz in hand. What are they playing? Oh, is this a Scape Shift deck? Seems like we should line up well against Scape Shift. Cracks Misty. Do I open... Do I open an E3 Bolt pack with Tezzeret or a Johnny? I think you go with... What is this deck? Search for Tomorrow's Suspended. This is a little annoying, but let's blow up the blue mana. Get a Stomping Grounds. I mean, I think we're doing pretty good. Thank you, Delusional Croc. Uh... You are against Rug Kiki, I think. Oh, interesting. Well, hopefully we can win this with our land destruction. 
I think there are other cards that are better represent the history of mag uh, magic. I think they did a pretty good job, actually, hitting cards that represent the history of magic. That part doesn't really bother me. I think they did do pretty well there. I don't know how they're ever going to kiki <laughs> with this mana base. I don't know what's going on. Epicus, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big Scoops here for our new subscribers. I think it looks super fun to play. I sang of this earlier on Twitter. Check it out if you haven't. What are your thoughts on it? Well, let me pull it up, Paniolo. Ponent. Wrath of God. All right, there goes our tracker. We draw a forest. One, two, three, four. Ugh, so close to double land destruction. Well, I think we just have to... Acid Moss, Steam Vents, get a Stomping Ground, do we want to crack a clue or play the birds, Necro Evolution, oh, that's super spicy, Eldritch Evolution is such a fun card, as long as it doesn't get countered, that's super sweet looking deck though, I like it. Worst thing about Masters 25 is, is they reprinted Elemental Blast instead of... I just wish they had put them at common. I do not know why they didn't put the Blast at, at common for pauper purposes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven mana. Uh, I kind of want to just draw a card over the birds. Yeah, let's play the forest, pass the turn. I think cracking a clue is better here. We got to keep them off lands, and they are ramping, because sooner or later, I don't know what their payoff is, but... Oh, it's the Healy combo. Ugh. Okay. Forest. They shouldn't have too many counters, then. What? What is happening? What is happening? What is going on? Somebody... Somebody tell me what is happening. Please. <laughs> I think it's Scape Shift. I think it's a Scape Shift deck. Are we losing? Oh my goodness. Well, I think we got to keep blowing up lands. Blow up... Breeding pool. Play Wooded Foothills. Play Birds of Paradise. Pass the turn. I mean, we can win pretty quickly once we resolve Inferno Titan. Is it Bring to Light Scape Shift? Okay, that makes that makes sense. Opponent just keeps ramping. Man, it seems like Blood Moon is insane. I don't think it's mono black control. <laughs> that's that's one of the less likely options. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Uh, the problem, beer man, beer man. The, uh, the music on the stream is not the music I normally listen to. The problem is the music on the stream has to not get muted on Twitch and not get copyright claims on YouTube, which means about like 20 songs in the history of Earth actually qualify. Mostly Freak Fandango Orchestra, The 569, and GOP Fish. Welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big Scoops here for our new subscriber. Man, if we lose this, I'm going to be very disappointed. Scape Shift kills us if our opponent gets to 7 mana. Sakura Tribe Elder. Opponent's getting close to Scape Shift. Arbor Elf, that doesn't really help. Opponent passes. One, two, three. One, two, three. <sighs> Alright, well, I mean, I guess if we're dead, we're dead. Play Inferno Titan. Hit our opponent for three. This is it. If we're dead, they got us. Play Arbor Elf. Stomping Ground. Pass the turn. See what happens. Yeah, I don't... I do not understand what our opponent's deck is. 
Another land, six mana. Are we dead this turn? Our opponent's deck is spicy. I have no idea what it is, but it is spicy. All right, Steam Vents untapped. All right, so opponent has Cryptic by the looks. We draw a pretty useless forest, go to combat. Attack, attack, ping? What does our opponent have? Oh, all right, they, they scoop it up. I still have absolutely no idea what's happening. Uh, I normally listen to a lot of indie music, mostly rock, but all different styles. As a psych major, how do you feel about people having to work in the middle of the night all the time? Uh, probably not ideal. I have no idea what's happening. I still have no idea what our opponent's deck is. I have no idea. I know, Verima MX. I know. I need to get your music added to the playlist. Um, uh, some of my favorite, some of my favorite artists are uh, Velvet Underground, Wilco, Ween, um, Animal Collective. Captain Beefheart. That's a, a short list. Jeffrey Lewis. Uh, yeah, those are those are some of my favorite bands. The Flintable C. Welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big Soup's here for our new subscriber. Yeah, I'm a big Ween fan. <laughs> Had coffee with Wilco one time. Oh, man, I would love to have coffee with Wilco. Yeah, I really like Wilco a lot. Uh, Love Industrial? Eh, nah. I mean, I listen to all kinds of music. Yeah, I like I like Trout Mask Replica. Like, Captain Beefheart is weird. I don't like most of his later music. His first couple albums are awesome. And then he's, ah, yeah. Like, Frank Zappa is kind of the same way. I like Mothers of Invention, Frank Zappa, a lot. But then, once he gets really goofy, I don't like it as much. I did play D&D &D with Tomer. It is eventually, I do like Nine Inch Nails. I, I haven't listened to them in a long time, but I do, I do like Nine Inch Nails. I wouldn't rank them uh, as my, like, on that list of my favorite bands, but I do like them. Do we just run this back? I have no idea what our opponent's deck is. Literally none. I am ready for some snow tonight. Apparently we're supposed to have a a ridiculous snowstorm. Hopefully I don't lose power because I got articles to write and videos to record. So this deck is called Ponza. I actually think we mulligan this. This is just so slow. Um, this is better. And Blood Moon. Blood Moon seems really good against our opponent's deck, so we will keep it. Oh, what was I saying? I forget what I, I forget what I was uh, going to say. We were talking about something that seemed somewhat important. Utopia Sprawl. On... Red. Pass the turn. Hopefully our opponent taps out for something and we can start the fun. The D&D &D video, that's on Tomer. It is going to happen. But Tomer is supposed to be editing it. And like two weeks ago, he said it would be done two Mondays ago. And I haven't heard anything about it since. <laughs> so it is it is a thing that will happen. But I, I don't know when that's going to happen. Come on, just play play a secure tribe elder, and we can blood moon you. Cause we know they do have counters. Opponent passing. Well, forest. Stone rain. 
Here comes counter number one. It's in the gate. All right. Well, better to get that counter than a Blood Moon encounter. Because Blood Moon seems so good. Since you're doing Planeswalker Tribal, what do you think about making Chandra Tribal with Rakdos, Lord of Rides, and Nihab the Eternal? Ooh. That's a, a spicy way of doing it. Oh, more non basics. <laughs> oh, Pony better have a swan song. Or it will be their swan song. I mean, I guess they can get one basic. It's got to be right to just Blood Moon. I think we keep this uncracked, actually, as a mountain. So play Windswept Teeth, Blood Moon you. La Plato for the 11th month in a row. Welcome back to the Fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Because Scoop's cheer for our new subscriber. Pony might get Green Man and have Nature's Claim or something. Still, we're making them play a lot of cards they probably don't want to be playing. Pass the turn. Because they had to bring in the gates. They have to fetch. They bring in Blood Moon Hate. No spell peers. That's good. Armory Low, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big Scoops here for our new subscriber. Oh, uh, so many options. We can Hellkite. I would love to just hit a land destruction spell. It might be best just to Tracker, Stomping Grounds, Crack Clue. Yeah, Blood Moon is actually fixing our mana here. I'm playing a modern GP in Phoenix. Tried to decide whether to play Burn or 8 Whack. What would you play? Uh... Just Blood Braid, you think? Alright. Alright, we'll spin the wheel. People want to see the Blood Braid. I mean, we could draw a card, but we'll, we'll Blood Braid. Come on, Land Destruction. Eh. Well, Redundant Blood Moon's not horrible. That means one Nature's Claim isn't going to save our opponent's day. <laughs> Pona said this is a matchup that they can't win. So that's good to hear. Can never have too many Blood Moons. Actually, that's not 100% true. So if you don't have any real experience with Burn, if you're like a long-time Burn player, I would probably play Burn because I really think that knowing your deck well and practicing it a lot is the most important thing to being successful in Modern. But if you're just relatively equal as far as how much time you've spent on either deck, I would probably play 8 Whack personally. I think it's competitive, and I would enjoy it much more than Burn. Oh man, this deck is sweet. Why don't we just Ponza people like every stream? This is pretty close to Panharmonicon levels of fun. <laughs> uh, Wrath Tribal EDH. Uh, I don't remember it, but I'm pulling it up now. I know I still have some unseen deck lists in my mailbox. Well, let's. I mean, you got a Blood Braid, spin the wheel. Ooh, all right, tracker's fine. Get in for a bit. And I feel like our opponent's uh, scumbling to our Blood Moons and Blood Braids. This deck is super sweet. Wrath Tribal sounds like my kind of commander. Opponent passes. Well, let's just mercifully see if we can put our opponent out of their misery. And we got the GG's. Ponza, we are Ponzing up to two and O. Oh. Yeah, Scred is, Scred is pretty sweet, too. It's no free win red, <laughs> but it's pretty sweet. What do you think about taking turns splashing blue for Blood Moon and Karanos? Uh, we definitely got to play taking turns now that, uh, now that Jace is unbanned. I feel like the Jace unbanning is a huge deal for taking turns, but Blood Moons and Karanos sounds pretty sweet. Yeah, here's the list we're playing. We haven't got to Trinisphere lock anyone yet, but... Oh, I should have asked him what deck they were playing. Ugh, I forgot. Yeah, I should have asked him, because I, I have no idea what their deck was doing. I've been teaching my son how to play Burn, and there are a lot of tricky lines to play. It isn't like Lantern Control hard or anything. Yeah, I don't think Burn... I think Burn is one of the... I've said this before. It's, it's one of the easiest decks I think to play reasonably well but it's one of the harder decks to actually play really well yeah bring to life scape shift seems likely do you think you'll ever play my guile storm deck I need 
I know it needs a sideboard, but it shouldn't be too hard. Uh, I don't know if we'll play Guilestorm or not. It was definitely a spicy idea. Yeah, I mean, if this league goes super quick, maybe we'll be able to double up if we play another quick deck. Either more of this, or we could probably we could probably eight whack real quick. Eight whack is <laughs> that's one of the biggest upsides of eight whack is you can play a league in like forty five minutes. <laughs> it's so fast. You either win or you lose like instantly. Hopefully, win though. Uh, where can I submit EDH decks to individual players on Goldfish? Uh, probably emailing is the easiest way to do it. Yeah, we might. Well, we'll see how quick this goes. We could run into some really long games and and not do another league. But if we really have an hour and a half left or something when we finish this league, then we can uh, can maybe try to give Eight Whack a super quick spin. Blue Red Fires, that's true. <laughs> you probably lose really quick. <laughs> uh, no, we've played some really sweet favorable wins decks. What did Fails for our opponent? Yup. Well, what did Fails? Crack, what did Fails? Grab a forest. Utopia Sprawl. On. Uh, I guess it's got to be red for Molten Rain. Pass the turn. Man is a little awkward here. Opponent cracks. Opponent might be playing Titan Shift. Ooh, Overgrown Tomb. They're Junding? I wonder how Jun goes. Probably really well if we resolve this. Oh, opponent. <laughs> well, well, the quick games continue. Wooded Foothills. We will crack Wooded Foothills. We will get ourselves a forest. We will play Blood Moon. Our opponent will stop playing Magic. We will win. <laughs> What do you think of Jason Vice Sculptor and Modern this far? It's pretty good. Oh, man. <laughs> nice mountains. Uh... So let's play Birds of Paradise. Play Stomping Ground. Molten Rain. Whatever. Pass the turn. And now we got a Titan to finish things off. One, two, three, four, five. Opponent draws more mountains. <laughs> sure, we'll take. I think our opponent just scoops to this Titan. What did Foothills? Tap, 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 tap. Inferno Titan. And our opponent scoops it up. <laughs> oh. Lovely. It is lovely. Would you consider making a Spotify playlist for us to listen to? Uh, yeah, I can make a Spotify playlist. I think I already have some Spotify playlists made, but yeah, I can definitely, uh, I can do that sometime. A league, uh, a stream playlist. We haven't even been sideboarding in any of these matchups. <laughs> Ooh, Starfield of Nick's Lunar Force. We have a new subscriber, Chaos Engineer. Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big soups here for our new subscriber. Yeah, that's a Lunar Force is an interesting idea. Though, yeah, it's really cool. It's like a, it's an interesting soft lock. It's basically like counter the first spell your opponent plays each turn. But I guess if you can get multiple Starfields and get back multiple lunar forces then it becomes an even harder lock how does the deck actually win what's the is there a win condition i guess you're just using starfield yeah looks pretty fun uh i don't know jay J cowie it looks like you're subbed i don't know if i saw it pop up though welcome to the fishbowl though thank you for your subscription big soups here for our new subscriber yeah i don't know if we actually change anything relic <sighs> trims down tarmogoyfs uh i guess that's fine trinisphere is like so so our opponent is going to be on the play, so they're probably going to have a ton of discard. A braid can kill a bob? 
Needle on Lily. Eh. I don't know. I mean, Thunder Maul and Blood Braid seem pretty good against Lily. Maybe it's worth it? Yeah, the first spell is really countered. Uh, opposition is so sweet. Yeah, opposition is super powerful. Maybe we just run it back. I don't know if I really want to cut anything for Pithing Needle. Yeah, let's run it back. Uh, do I think this, the Ponza list, is competitive enough? I think the Ponza list is pretty competitive, yeah. I think it is pretty good. Yeah, Braid is probably fine. I don't know, maybe we should have sideboarded more. Ugh, this is a little slow, but it wins. Luxag for the ninth month in a row. Welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big Soup's here for our new subscriber. Do you think Eldrazi Post or Death in Texas is a stronger in Legacy now for getting into Legacy? Ugh. I think Death in Texas is the more tier of the two. I don't play as much Legacy as I should. Yeah, I like Thunder Maul over, over Storm Breath, personally. That's my that's my own my own theory. Raiden, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big Soup's here for our new subscriber. All right, this hand is this hand is better. I mean, it still gets blown out by discard and removal, but it's better-ish compared to the last one. Raging Ravine. Uh, we scried you to the bottom. Forest, Arbor Elf, pass the turn. Yeah, Thunder Maw I like because it lines up really well with Jays. Bolt the Elf. Bolt the Elf. And tap land. Jeez, so many lands. Stomping grounds tapped. Pass the turn. The mono land plan is not ideal. Blooming Marsh. Ugh, thought sees. Ay! Ay! This is going very poorly. Come on, Blood Moon off the top. Blood Moon off the top is probably game over. Blood Moon, one time. <sighs> All right. Stomping Grounds untapped. Oh, we've drawn a lot of lands in a row. A lot of lands in a row. Pass the turn. Overgrown Tomb. Tapped. Come on, Blood Moon. Blood Moon. You could do it, Dak. You could do it. Arbor Elf. Well, that's things that die to Grim Lava Mancer for a hundred. Pass the turn. For it, yeah. We we've just drawn all mana every turn of this game. Here goes our Arbor Elf. The only thing keeping us alive, I don't know about this Grim Lava Mancer in your Tarmogoyf deck plan. Now we'll keep our opponent off black mana. Floats black. Play Windswept Teeth. Pass the turn. We're just not doing anything. Yeah, we just have not drawn any any action here, unfortunately. Opponent getting in. Well, there's the Blood Moon. That buys us time, hopefully. They don't have black mana right now for Abrupt Decay. So this should actually work. Pass the turn. Well, we got to figure out a way to beat <laughs> a Grim Lava Mancer. Oh, Swamp. No, Genesis Rangork. Welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big Scoop's here for our new subscriber. Come on, threat. Any threat. Any threat in our deck. Oh, that counts. Thunder Maw. I think Thunder Maw probably can raise Grim Lava Mancer. I think odds might be in favor of that. Pony could have Terminate. They do have black mana. Wow, are we going to win this? Oh, no! Black green! Pony drawing all the basics. All the basics in a row. Yup. That's impressive. Pony passes. Um, boy. If we win this, I'm going to be thrilled because this draw has been super bad. Pony down to six. Pass the turn. Here's the abrupt decay. Wow. Our opponent ran so well. So well. Plays a tap lad. 
They can get in a raging ravine. Yep, here comes. Oh, we need to draw something. Gets in for three. Yep. Come on, deck. Come on, deck. Opponent passes. One, two, three, four. Wait. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven. Man. This draw has been about as bad as it gets. Hit our opponent. Play the land. Pass the turn. Opponent hits us. If they have a lightning bolt, we're dead. Or if they can kill our... What did they draw? Blood Braid. Brutality. Three, four, five, six, seven? Down to one? Whoo! Whoo! Willy Wonder, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big Scoops here for our new subscriber. Are they going to end up one point of damage short? I mean, they could have a bolt. They could have a removal spell. But I'm seeing seven points of damage. Opponent's thinking it through. I mean, they have one card in hand. But I feel like we might be stealing this. <laughs> oh, God. The main reason to not fetch is Tireless Tracker, actually, and Courser of Crew Fix, but also maintaining our life total is seeming relevant here. Oh, my goodness. The fact that our opponent's tanking so hard makes me think that they don't have a bolt in hand because, I mean, we're just super dead if they do. Wow. All did you welcome to the fishbowl thank you for your subscription big soups here for our new subscriber or maybe them thinking so long is a bad thing oh they discard their card all right yup drains us to six yeah i don't see a way they can beat us here then maybe they're hoping we crack the fetch gets in to three can lava mancer us to one to one Wow, they drew the two basics, which was actually, well, that was pretty impressive of our deck because we ran really badly, and we're up to 3-0. We we are uh, already feeding the children, and we have two rounds to go. Two rounds to go. Panza, good God. Well, good thing we didn't crack that fetch. <laughs> I didn't think we were going to win either. We flooded out severely. Uh, well... We're just, like, crushing with this. Uh, white border fits the, the tilt factor. The 3-2 dream is definitely still alive as well. Pons is a deck that tilts the opponent, and white border basics also tilt opponents, so it fell on, it fell on point, on flavor. Well, with how quick this is going, maybe we're going to get to 8-whack uh, as well. We don't usually get to do double leagues, but... Maybe we're going to double league it tonight. That means I should probably uh, actually get the cards for 8-Wac. Because I don't think I still have all of them. Actually, I guess I can check. Do I still have 8-Wac cards? No. Um. What? Oh, we need... All right. Well, I guess we gotta, we'll get the cards just in case. Just in case we have a time to double up tonight with two leagues. Bridgevine? Yeah, I would like to play Bridgevine at some point, but I wanna play, if we're gonna try to do two leagues, we're probably going to uh, try to play fast decks. I guess Bridgevine might be fast as well. <laughs> Open the standard deck tab. There's nothing awesome there. No, Ponza's still going. We are still Ponzaing. We are 3-0 though right now with Ponza. 
Yeah, that's the problem. I'm probably going to need to take some time to get things right. I know goblins pretty well, and I know Ponza fairly well. Hmm. So we're on the play. We don't have land destruction, but we have tracker. And we have all the ramp we could want. So any land destruction is very good. It's actually called Ponza after some weird Kelzone type thing from Wisconsin that the person who originally made the Ponza deck way back in the 90s uh, really liked or something. Yeah, all right, we'll keep it. Good enough. We can't turn to Tracker plus land, unfortunately. Eh, can we? Utopia Sprawl? Yeah, we can't. Because we got to play the land first for Utopia Sprawl. So, Forest and Arbor Elf. Ship the turn. Man, it would be sweet if we could actually 5-0. Do I have any plans of streaming Pauper? So right now I've just been doing Pauper as uh, for playing Pauper. But it's possible we stream it in the future if there's demand for it. MJ Growings, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big scoops here for our new subscriber. Opponent, marsh flatting. Flatten the marsh. Swamp. Inquisition. Oh, we really wanted that tracker. That tracker was very important to our plans. Alright. Well, let's see what we draw. Courser's pretty legit. Well, play stomping grounds. I guess we just empty our hand. Play stomping grounds. Utopia sprawl on green. Tap. Untap. Tap. Play courser. Play birds of paradise. Unfortunately, we're drawing wooded foothills, but eh, not a bad turn two. Worky, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big Scoops here for our new subscriber. Currently sideboarding in a friendly league down... <laughs> down 3-1. What's going on, Nightbot? What's the nature of the goldfish setup? Are you and Richard co-owners, or is everyone employee of Richard? Uh, I am the content manager. Richard is the owner of goldfish. Richard is the founder and owner. So, I'm just an employee. Opponent, uh, Molten Rain on top. And let's do some attacking. Hit our opponent, hit our opponent. Looks like our opponent's playing Mardu Pyromancer. Play Wooded Foothills, gain a life. Not going to crack it, though. Pass the turn. Gorio's Vengeance would be a sweet reprint. Well, we might be we might be stuck playing Ponza twice, be, unless I think Card Hoarder's down right now. So I don't know if I can get the cards I need for uh, for Eight Whack. Why are we giving big scoops to the subscribers? I don't know what to give them, or even if I had big scoops. Scoops here is the is this emote the the fist pump scoops fish. Twiggy13 for the 14th month in a row. Welcome back to the fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big Scoops here for our new subscriber. All right. Killing our stuff. Blood Crypt tapped. Well, we get to start destroying lands, which is something. One, two, yeah, whatever. Three, four. Blow up a Blood Crypt. Over tapping a bit, but that's fine. Well, we need threats. Get in with our Arbor Elf. Put our opponent down to 13. Pass the turn. Yeah, Pernicious Deeds is pretty sweet. 
Whoa, Metamorphose. Okay, redraw. I mean, I'm sure... Yeah, the four hollow one from Matt Nass was pretty sweet. This is another situation where Thunder Maw is so good. Or maybe we'll keep drawing Arbor Elves. We'll play Arbor Elf. Pass the turn. We need Inferno Titan or Thunder Maw. Those are the big ones that we're looking for. Also, Trinisphere seems like it could be sweet against this deck. I missed two donations? No. Oh, uh, a cheer donation? Sometimes I might miss cheer donations. Firebird for life with the cheer. Cheer for 100. Whatever happened to Tiny Leaders? That format is was like super hyped for a minute, then died, and no one speaks of it anymore. Uh, it was a very salved format, I think, was the problem with Tiny Leaders. People, people were really hyped about it, but then people realized that, uh, oh boy, play the forest past the turn. People realized that there was a pretty clear best deck or best couple of decks, and it made it a lot less fun than people wanted it to be. Also, from Firebirds for Life, more cheering. Ugh, opponent. All right. Well, we still need it. We just need a threat before they find their Bedlam Reveler and really go to town. Want to thank you for taking the time to reply to my list. I sent a free view. It means a lot that you would take the time to read it through. I'm sure lots of stuff comes to you. Well, thank you for the cheer. Damage X, welcome to the fishbowl. And also, Road Cop. Rod Cop. <laughs> Big Scoops here for our new subscriber. EVMM25 looking okay for a $182 box. Uh, it looks okay at first glance. Gonna be super high variance, I think, is the concern. Nearly same gym for the 16th month in a row. Welcome back to the fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big Scoops here for our new subscriber. Good golly. I will say about this deck, we do have a tendency to continually flood out some games. That has been kind of a theme, is just like flooding, 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 flooding. Tiny Leaders was like a commander type format, but you could only play stuff converted mana cost three or less. Uh, and then people realized that Geist of St. Traft was just like the only thing going on as far as winning, and people lost interest in it. Faithless Looting. I occasionally wonder why your voice sounds like someone is pinching your a-hole. Uh, I don't know. I, uh, my voice is my voice. I don't have a good answer for you. How long does it take you to go through all the Fishbowl Thursday submissions? About how long does it take you to make a video after you pick a deck? So, making the videos usually isn't too hard. Oh, come on, deck. Alright, Blood Raid Elf is better than nothing. Tireless Tracker would be sweet. Molten Rain is okay, I guess. Not exciting, but it's okay. Specu, welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big Soup's here for our new subscriber. Opponent, Floating Bolt Mana. Bolting, our Blood Braid Elf. Alright, well, opponent's down to one card. One card until they hit a Bedlam Reveler. We're kind of keeping them off mana. Yeah, I was hoping we'd play against Tron, because we are... Oh, come on. One time Thunder Maw. I was hoping we'd play Tron, because we are set up to absolutely wreck Tron. Opponent gets in. I honestly don't know if it's even worth playing Blood Moon here. I don't even know if it is. I think we're gonna not. I guess we just pass. I do really hate Tron. Yeah, we do have some flood out issues. We don't really have any card advantage or card filtering any or anything. So we are, I mean, that is one of the easiest ways to lose with this deck. Prideful Pelican for the 14th month in a row. Welcome back to the fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big Soup's here for our new subscriber. Oh, Tron is a great matchup for this, isn't it? I think this is just like the Tron Destroyer. I don't know how Tron... I mean, it can be anything, but it seems like it rarely will beat it. Well, this one feels like it's slipping away. I mean, Bloodbraid Elf is sort of card advantage. Yeah, this is... 
I mean, we've just, we haven't drawn anything. None of our good stuff. Yeah, I mean, we have Tireless Tracker in our deck. I was a scape chip player. I drew all my Bring the Lights game one. Oh, people were definitely asking about the list. So if you're looking for the scape chip list, it is now in the chat. Pony gets in, and yeah, I mean, this just does it. Even if we draw something, we're going to just die to bolt. Down to 10. And yeah, there's a the bolt. Yeah, wasn't meant to be on that one. We just, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. So, wow, well, we were going to go roughly a million more turns before we hit any action. And then roughly another million more turns before we, yeah. We could have, if we could have lived another 10 turns and we would not have won. <laughs> 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. That is a lot of, a lot of lands in the top half of our deck. Beat the Forcey, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big Soup's here for our new subscriber. Let me take a look at your blue white flyers list. Uh, someone posted it back in the chat a little bit. Hopefully they will, uh, hopefully they will post it again. The dream is still alive for right now, but that didn't go well. Uh, blue red flyers look sweet. Favorable wins, lots of good flying creatures. I'd almost like more favorable wins. I don't know about Jace. I've never really had much success with Jace Cunning Castaway. As much as Chaz liked it. <laughs> um, all right, opponent. I guess we bring in Anger of the Gods, most likely. We probably go down Blood Moons. Opponent's deck is actually built to play through Blood Moons. So I think we go up Blood Moons and probably go up the Relic of Progenitus's. I think that Trinisphere could be fine, but they do have Colgan's Command. Oh uh, yeah, Chaz is okay. He's just not doing content. The thing about fetching aggressively is we have Tireless Tracker and the, the math on deck thinning is so slight that giving up on tireless tracker clues for the percentage of percentage of drawing a higher uh the higher very slightly higher percentage of drawing a non-land card you get from thinning i don't actually think it's worth it i think it's worth it if you have nothing that cares about land drops but i think just tireless tracker and courser is reason enough is reason enough that you uh that you want to not aggressively crack fetches we gotta cut one more card though. Might just be an acid moss. That's probably that's probably fine, I guess. Did we just get a new spoiler? We got a new spoiler. I don't know where it came from, or if it's actually if it's actually real. But maybe? Etherez, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big Soup's here for our new subscriber. Uh, we're actually going to keep this just because Relic is really good. It's another sort of like floody outy hand, but Relic is very good against our opponent's deck. It shuts down Bedlam Reveler, it hinders Lingering Souls. Uh, I'm sorry. Sometimes I mix up the new and returning subscribers. Scoops is the is the goldfish, the goldfish uh, mascot of MTG Goldfish. Why is everyone so jaded about Twenty Fifth Masters? I think it's uh, I think it's partly because. People had really high expectations for 25th Masters. And then Wizards kind of hyped it up and said, oh, this is going to be the theme master set you've been waiting for. So expectations were really, really high. And then when you say stuff like, oh, this is going to be the theme master set that you've been waiting for. And this is going to make up for uh, iconic masters. And then you spoil like Tree of Redemption as a mythic. I think it makes sense that people are going to be a little bit like, eh. 
the I think the other thing is people just feel like the set is overpriced, and I think that is true. I think it it should be costed lower. Ooh, let me take a look, Death Worlds. Blood Crypt. Tapped. Well, there goes our land destruction. Let's keep eating the graveyard. Play Arbor Elf. Play Wooded Foothills. Pass the turn. I was going to get two boxes, but I'm done after the stupid mythic tree. I mean, one mythic shouldn't really change your your thoughts 100% on whether or not you're going to buy a box, but it was a pretty disappointing. Wizards got to understand it's different in a $10 pack. Like, having Tree of Redemption as a mythic in Innistrad, sure. Having it as a mythic in a $10 pack, ugh, that's that's a little a little rough. I quit playing. You sound like Jay Zoller, who somehow quit magic over unstable of all things. All right, Pony has Fatal Push. And Black Leaf Glyphs. Tomb Thingy, welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big Soup's here for our new subscriber. Man, I wonder if there's any way we should be cracking this relic. I guess not. Ugh. Ooh, there's Thunder Maw too. Well, Windswept Teeth, crack Windswept Teeth. Grab a forest. Spin the Blood Braid Wheel into. All right. I mean, I guess Utopia Sprawl's fine. On. Uh, I guess red. Get a Blood Braid. Hit our opponent. This does give our opponent... Oh, man. And a Bolt. This might actually let our opponent cast a Bedlam Reveler, which is not ideal. They have four... Yeah, land Bedlam Reveler is a thing here. Yeah, Doubling Season would have been a pretty sweet Mythic instead of Tree. Wasteland, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big Soup's here for our new subscriber. Seven of the ten mythics are currently priced over ten dollars. Yeah, I mean, I guess that is true. There are definitely some really good high-end mythics. No, no complaints about that. That is, that is true. Jay's. I mean, the big ones are Jace, uh, Liliana. Well, I guess this is okay-ish. We're going to lose Inferno Titan. But then we're going to kill Liliana with Thunder Maw. I almost hope we just draw land here. To wipe our opponent's graveyard for Bedlam Reveler. Birds is not quite the land we were dreaming of. Thunder Maw, Hellkite. Thunder Maw, kill Liliana. Exile a card from the... Oh, we should have done that first. Yeah, that was... That was definitely a mistake. A slight mistake, but a mistake. Because we could have gotten an instant out of the graveyard or sorcery. Opponent. Says more Liliana's? All right, Faithless Looting. That's actually not too devastating. That could have been worse. Yeah, Thunder Maw, I think, is pretty underrated. In this matchup, I think it's just strictly better than Thunder Maw. Well, not strictly better than Storm Breath Dragon because of the monstrous ability, but mostly better than Storm Breath Dragon. Opponent passing. More mana. Yeah, I think the time has come to just sack the relic. All right, now we get to Stone Rain. Play Birds of Paradise as Liliana Fodder. Hit our opponent. And now we might be in okay shape. Yeah, I think that was the time to get rid of it so our opponent couldn't get back. 
uh, couldn't cast a Bedlam Reveler. All right, they have a Terminate, so we need another threat. Stone Rain isn't really a threat, but it's better than nothing. Um, yeah, I guess we'll pass. If our opponent wants to cast Discard to get rid of Utopia Sprawl, that's fine. Yeah, Plague Wind is a little bit, eh. Yeah, being path-proof is nice in some matchups. Young Pyromancer. Courser's not bad here. One, two, three. Play Courser. Wooded Foothills. Ooh, Bloodbraid on top. That I like. And yeah, let's just Utopia Sprawl. On green. Pass the turn. Whew! We might be getting there. One Hazret could be another good finisher. I mean, as long as we draw our finishers, they're pretty good. Opponent passes. Ooh. Anger, it might be worth cascading into Anger, actually. We could crack our fetch to try to find a land destruction spell. Ooh, I don't think I saw the blue-white mentor deck. I get so many tweets, especially during spoiler season, so many notifications that it's really easy for stuff to get lost. All right, I mean, we'll just cascade into anger, I guess. That seems fine. We keep our courser. We get rid of young Pyromancer. It goes before Bloodbraid. Just kidding. Opponent has a bolt. Um... Jeez. Ugh. I really like this courser. I really, really do. Now I'm tempted to crack and keep our courser. Yeah, I think we're going to shuffle it away. Maybe we'll shuffle back into... Oh! All right. Tracker is better. I would rather hit a tracker now that they cast that bolt. Now we just want to land on top. Ugh. Well, get in with Bloodbraid. If we hit lands to go with... Wow. Okay. Opponent gives up on the Pyromancer. Interesting. I feel like we're in pretty good shape, though. A chunk of metal. Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you for your... Oh, they got another one. Thank you for your subscription. Come on, land on top after Tracker. Big Scoops here for our new subscriber. There it is. That's what we wanted. And now we should be very good. Get some clues. Draw some cards. Go attacking. Crack a clue. Draw a card. Um, let's leave Bloodbraid on top to avoid this card. Pass the turn. Yeah, that went that went pretty well. I'm glad we shuffled. And our opponent scoops it up. All right. The dream is alive. The dream is alive. Oh, uh, yeah. The dream is living. Thunder Maw was super helpful there. All right. Yeah, that was very Stevens-esque, I would say. <laughs> Todd would be proud. Uh, we got to start thinking about our decks for the next Team Modern Super League. 27th is our next week on Team Modern Super League. Uh... Yeah, we might just run it back. This setup seems pretty good. I guess we could bring in a braid as well. <sighs> Let's just run it back, though. The relics are good. This is fine. I think Trinisphere is good, although Coligan's Command is a concern. But I don't know if we have room to bring it in when we're bringing in relics and angers. Play Blue Moon instead of Blood Moon. Ugh. I guess we got to mulligan this. Yeah, yes, Mulligan. All right. Well, if our opponent doesn't have discard, we have turn one. Turn one relic. I think what it fails got to go bottom. Come on, no discard. No discard so we can get this relic down. That would go a long way towards life being good. Yeah, Solemnity Lock is something I'm definitely interested in trying. Eh, they got discard. It's a Thought Seize. 
What's up, Mindrick? Yep, there goes Relic. We're probably going to draw the fetch land. Ooh, no fetch land. Well, Windswept Teeth. Crack Windswept Teeth. Get a forest. Play Arbor Elf. Pass the turn. Oh, that Relic is so helpful. Being on the draw is definitely painful against these kind of decks. Faithless Looting for our opponent. I mean, we could still draw another Relic, of course. We have two more in our deck still. And they would be super good. Kind of hoping this Arbor Elf lives so we can destroy a land next turn. We're 3-0 and right now overall, and we're 1-1 one one in this match. So we really need to win if we're going to try to get the 5-0. Yeah, I don't know why the bot is so long. It has us listed in two leagues, which definitely is not the case. So opponent draws discards. They probably have a bolt here. Gluttony pays. Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big scoops here for our new subscriber. Play them out and pass the turn. Our opponent can just, man, they can bedlam reveler next turn. Not looking good. Yep, bloodstained mire. Uh, this is like the the Mardu pyromancer nut draw. There goes, man, there goes the Stone Rain. Yeah, they just have, this is their, the perfect draw for this deck. And now we can't win. We will draw more lands, and yeah. Brutal, brutal. 5-0 Dream dying to the nut draw of our opponent's deck. Tapping, untapping, tapping. Faithless looting. We don't really have a way to deal with the Bedlam Reveler is a huge problem. Yeah, I mean, our opponent had discard, discard, removal, and we actually would have been fine if they didn't also have Bedlam Reveler. Discard, discard, removal, Bedlam Reveler, and now apparently even more discard is just, I mean, that's as good as it gets for our opponent's deck. Yeah. It is the Nutter Butters. Yeah, Thundermaw doesn't do it. We're dead to Bedlam Reveler way before Thundermaw is going to win this game. Opponent gets in. So we, I guess we could hit, like, another Blood Braid. Or an Arbor Elf. That's, uh, that's a magic card. Play Arbor Elf, pass the turn. We can't deal with the, the Bedlam Reveler is the problem. So we're just stuck taking it for now until forever. Oh my goodness. Whoo! Whoo, boy. Yeah, does not get any better than that. Opponent gets in, 4-3. We draw more Arbor Elves. Yeah, there's no, there's no way we can win from here. I mean, I won't scoop because I don't want to get yelled at. Play Arbor Elf, play the land, pass the turn. All right, well, we got the 4-1 Dream still alive. 5-0 Dream, ugh, dying in a really brutal way. Yeah, we're going to scoop. There's no way our opponent's going to fizzle, and there's nothing our deck can do from here. Inferno Titan doesn't do anything. Like, nothing, nothing does anything, unfortunately. All right, Dream Dad, Dream Dad, Dream Dad. Yeah, I mean, we would have made him earn it until that Faithless Looting. Then, that's basically just earning it. We would have had to double chump with our Arbor Elves. Going first is definitely a huge deal in Modern. That is true. What's up, Dixie? Yeah, I mean, there's definitely... That's the easiest way Ponza loses, is it loses to itself. It's also a deck that is way better if you win the die roll. Like, the die roll is insanely important to Ponza because if you can blow up a land on turn two you beat basically any deck in the format on the draw though you don't have the ability to do that I mean I don't think playing uh yeah I mean someone's got to play first I'm not saying that that's it's wrong but this is a deck that particularly the die roll is particularly important to Dan Heppel, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. 
Big Scoops here for our new subscriber. Uh, I don't know if I saw the EDH deck or not. Opponent plays a mountain. Oh dear. Well, forest go. Yeah. <laughs> Yikes. Blood Moon's bad. Opponent's playing 8 whack. And this is looking not good already. Arbor Elf wins the Swept Teeth. Yeah, this might just be a matchup that we can't win either. Uh, the 5-0 dream is very quickly becoming the 3-2 dream, which is a little bit disappointing. There's Foundry Street Denizen. We have some okay cards after sideboarding. But yeah, we're we're gonna get bushwhacked here. We're taking I don't even know. I mean this is this is why the deck is so good. If you stumble even a little bit, it is just absurd amounts of damage. Turn three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And then we're gonna be like playing a land destruction spell. <laughs> Ooh, yikes. Uh, we'll get a stabby ground. I guess we could blood mood them. Yeah, I mean, that's that's 8 whack. The old turn 3 kill. Whew, well, at least it's going fast. We can bring in our Trinispheres here. Trinispheres, Anger of the Grods, Abrade, Kitchen Finks. I think are probably our best cards. Gotta go down the Blood Moons. And probably gotta go down some expensive stuff. Like Thunder Maw. Acid Mosses? It might just be something like that. Blood Moon Tribal in the future. Yeah, we could probably uh, we could probably play some Blood Moon Tribal. We kinda play Blood Moon Tribal in Free Wind Red. Yeah, I mean, turn two on the play, Trinisphere is probably game over. It's kind of like Blood Moon, <laughs> but for goblins. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's let's run it like that. I think we are going to get to try two leagues, which is sweet. All right, we're going to keep this 100% because we have Anger. And Anger is hopefully enough. Windswept Teeth, go. Uh, Stone Rain is in especially good, although it's better when we have Trinisphere in our, <clears throat> Trinisphere in our deck to actually hardlock our opponents. Uh, this week's Commander Clash, I'm playing Fungus Tribal. <laughs> it's actually pretty sweet. Stopping rounds tapped. Oh, there's Trinisphere too. Uh, Windswept Teeth go. Well, these are, these are a couple of good cards. I think we might actually be in pretty good shape here. Opponent. Getting in with Loyalist. Yup. Down to 17. What's the follow-up? It's a pile driver. Well, crack windswept teeth. Get a stomping grounds tapped. Ugh, this is a big, a big decision point. Oh, a braid. Uh, it is not, Th Thalon is in the deck, but Thalon is not the, is not the commander. Uh, Gabe is the commander. Need to have a, need to have the white mana. Yeah, I think we're just gonna Trinisphere. Take our beats one more turn, and then follow up with Anger. Because our opponent can either play one or zero things this turn. Oh, all right. They got a land, so they can play one thing. And uh, that is their best thing. It is a Bushwhacker. They did not get to Surge it, which is a little better, but it's still a big chunk of damage. Yeah, Thalon is super sweet. I just wanted, uh, wanted more colors. Down to eight. Triple Bolt range, or Bolt plus... Ooh. All right, well, we got to Anger. Clear the board. Pass the turn. 
Corsair could help. That's a little incidental life gain. Wow, the Goblin Flood is actually making their deck work against Trinisphere. Of all the times for the Goblin Flood to be good, gets him a Goblin Guide. Land? Not a land. Tireless Tracker. Down to six. Yeah, well, play Corsair. Wow. Oh, and no land. Yeah, that is... We're probably dead. Oh, man, that is brutal. What do you think your video series... Do you think your video series have ever influenced the price of cards? Uh, yeah, probably. Yeah, that does it. Our opponent picked the perfect game, like, normally with goblins, with 8-whack. If you draw five lands, you are 0% to win the game. But our opponent managed to flood out at the one specific card in all of modern where you want to flood out with goblins. Seriously, the one the one card in all modern where flooding out is good. And that does it. Yup, that does it, that does it. Well, that was disappointing. Uh, we had our absolutely ideal draw for that matchup, and it did not work out for us. Jeez, that was brutal. Well, we got to see the good and bad of Ponza. We got to see... The absolutely insane matchups where we literally cannot lose. And then we got to see the games where Ponza, it just draws land, 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 Arbor Elf, land, Birds of Paradise, land destruction spell while the opponent has eight lands. <clears throat> and then we also got to see it really struggle against the fastest, uh, maybe the fastest aggro deck in the modern format, uh, the 8 wet Goblins deck. It is... It is literally just so fast. So anyway, since that league went so fast, I think we're going to try to double up and do two super quick leagues and have our one super quick league of <laughs> Bloodbraid Ponza and then probably an even quicker league with some 8 whack ab uh, action. But first, before we do that, we have to, uh, we got to crack this treasure chest. Sometimes, sometimes it only takes one. One treasure chest. So let's crack it open. See what we get. Come on. Something good for our efforts. Uh, <laughs> we played Pillar of the Perunes not long ago. Actually, last week in uh, the Lucky Charms deck. Myth realized Pillar of the Perunes by force. These are all like semi-playable cards. I don't think any of them are worth anything. But, oh, I also got promo packs. Eh, I guess we might as well open these while we're here. They must have just given me these today. Ooh, serrated arrows. Is that valuable from Popper? Probably not. That's the the Garrick version. The dual deck version. Four cents. <laughs> okay. I mean, can use it for playing Popper though. Renegade Rallier. I don't actually like this promo art that much compared to the normal version for some reason. And, uh, last one. Sylvan Library. Good for a commander. Not worth anything because it's been reprinted like a billion times, but it is a very good card. Uh, actually, maybe it's worth, maybe it's worth a ticket, actually. That might be one of the, the better of the promos. Sweet. Why don't you check out my EDH Horde of Wheels Elemental? Yeah, I saw it earlier. It looks, uh, super spicy. That looks really fun. All right, uh, so we're going to do 8-whack. We might as well do some 8-whacking. Going to do, for the very rare times in the history of the stream, two leagues. Two leagues instead of one. However, I need to uh, run to the restroom before we jump into 8-whack. So, quick break, one-minute break. I'm going to run to the restroom really quick. Don't go away, because we're coming back to uh, try to turn three some people with 8-whack.
All right, I'm back. I made it. I made it. I'm here. It's eight wag time. Uh, do I have another pile driver? Maybe. Hopefully. Sort by rarity. Why are p pile? Yeah, I think I want to play the fourth pile driver over over the heel cutter. All right, that'll work. Wait, why is this? One, two. I don't have a pile driver. Oh, I only I don't have a pile driver. All right. Uh. Well. Then I guess we're playing heel cutter. <laughs> uh. I mean, heel cutter, heel cutter's fine, right? <laughs> oh goodness, it can be useful in in some time, uh, in some situations. Uh, I guess I can. I wonder if I have enough credit to buy one real quick. I don't really want to wait for for the bots to send it to me because I'd rather just jump into our league. But let me let me see. I might have some credit with goat bots. I have no idea how much it costs. It can't be that expensive. It was in like Vintage Masters or something. It's like one tick. All right. Ugh. Let me in. Let me in, goat bots. We need this pile driver. Ah. Not happening. Not happening. We're just we're just we're doomed to not play pile driver no matter how hard we try. <laughs> Uh, go bots. Let me, let me buy, let me give you my money for a goblin. Oh my God. All right, let's switch it up. Please, please let us trade. All right, we might actually be doing it. It was not pretty or easy, but we might be actually trading. Goblin pile driver, uh, cheapest version available. One point five six tax. Oh man, that's way more expensive than it used to be. <laughs> Why is it so expensive? Why did it? It must have spiked recently for some reason. Crazy moto prices. All right, we now we can put pile driver in the deck, and now we can go whack some people. <laughs> uh, yes, goblin pile driver. That's our lucky vintage masters goblin pile driver. And now, yeah, back to the leagues. Back to the leagues. Goblin. All right, I gotta update. I gotta update the name so people know what we're doing. Eight whack. All right, we're good. I'm back. I'm back in the chat. I can see your messages again. Yeah, eight whack is super fun. It is. It is super fun. <laughs> I have a janky popper storm deck. Ooh, I was just looking at popper storm and. There's like no storm cards legal. <laughs> it seems challenging. How do you actually, what's the finish? Oh, drawing a ton of cards. That's sweet. Yeah, we'll play first. We have a new donation. Ugh, one land. $30 donation, oh my goodness. From Sammy says, what does Sammy say? For the kids and the pile driver. Well, Sammy, thank you, thank you, thank you. That definitely that pays for a whole bunch of pile drivers. Oh, <laughs> uh, thank you. Uh, I like I like Fnatic. I know I'm probably wrong because uh, Patrick, Sullivan, and Kai both said that that they thought <laughs> Firebrand was better. But we're gonna we're on the play. Yeah, we're going to keep this. Just double Goblin Guide on the play is pretty good. Hopefully we we actually draw... Ooh, 
Ooh, $2 donation. More donations. Thank you so much, everyone. From Super Cyan, $2 donation for the driver. Well, thank you, thank you. Definitely appreciate it. Well, let's see how we do. Hopefully, we can feed the children again. Pony gets a swamp. Down to 18. We are going to need to draw land. We ended up 3-2 and two with Ponzo. We started out 3-0, and oh, and then things kind of fell apart. Land? Uh, all right. Foundry Street. Get in with Goblin Guide. Hit our opponent, maybe. Meguri, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big Scoops here for our new subscriber. Fozzy is on top. That's a pretty painful one for our opponent. Bolts, our goblin guide, unfortunately. Mr. Scruff, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big Soup's here for our new subscriber. The Haken Storm deck could drop red if it runs Flesh, Allergy, or Bitter Ordeal as finishers. Uh, I don't know what those cards are. I know what Bitter Ordeal is. I don't know what Flesh Allergy is. Sack a creature, destroy target creature, it's controller... Loses life equal to the number of creatures put into the battlefield this turn. Oh, man. Well, we're being punished. I think we had to keep the one lander, but we are being punished for for not drawing a second land here pretty severely. Not the start we were hoping for. Yeah, the overlay takes a little more effort. I can do it, but I kind of want to jump into the league. V uh, very human with the five dollar donation for the pile driver. Well, everyone, I'm gonna have more pile drivers than I know what to do with. Thank you, thank you. There's a Liliana. Yeah, this is looking bad since we are just stuck on lands like crazy. I mean, I guess we cast a Bushwhacker. Yeah, we're we're not winning this one. We're getting close to the scoop time. Liliana takes up. We will discard a... I guess a Bushwhacker, since we're uh, infinity away from casting it. I mean, I guess it's not impossible that we draw lands and can sneak out a win. Not likely. Bloodstained Mire. This Liliana is tearing apart our hand. Alright, seeing if I can make an overlay. Opponent passing. Pass the turn. Yeah. Well, we never got the second land. Uh, Cadol 3 Birth needs artifacts, and we don't have artifacts, so no, it is not in this list. From King Doc, for, for some white border lands. Well, thank you so much for the $2 donation, King Doc. Opponent, yep, taken up. We'll discard Chieftain. Opponent's down to two cards in hand. That's sort of something. If we draw land, land, we can still win this game. I don't know if we... I mean, I don't know what the odds of that are. So far, we have not drawn even land, so... More goifs? Ugh. Oh, boy. Yeah. Now it's very... Yep. All right. And now we are going to scoop it up. Yeah, I mean, turn six without hitting a land is not going to... Not going to get it done. So, yeah, I mean, Magic, it is a high-variance game, I would say. Yes, I'm trying to make new overlays. Let me see. I'll be back in the chat in a minute. Gotta, gotta do this overlay stuff. Alright. Overlay, mostly updated. It does not have the... It does not have the one change, but it will be updating. All right, against this deck, we really don't have anything. We just hope that we actually we actually draw our our lands. Tanic and Tanic again for the seventh month in a row. Welcome back to the fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. I mean, we can bring in the Blood Moon. Big Soup's here for our new subscriber. 
bring in the Blood Moon, go down a Chieftain, and I think we just try it like that and trust that... Trust that we're going to get our lands this time. Blood Moon is pretty good against them. It's a fine one of. I think it could almost be a two of. Okay, this hand's fine. Hopefully, now this time we got to not draw lands. The sweet spot for 8-Wag is really like three to four lands. Once you get to five lands, you're in trouble. If you never get to two lands, you're in trouble. Somewhere between two and four is the ideal spot for winning with this deck. What about a series where you take user decks that aren't quite there yet and fix them for teaching better brewing? Yeah, there's the discard. That could be a cool series. I've thought about doing that before. I just haven't had time to add in too much more new stuff. Eventually, the idea is that I'm going to be able to not do all the editing, and then I'll have more time to do some of that stuff, which will be sweet. Well, play the mountain. Not the insanest bushwhacker, but it gets in some damage. Hit our opponent for four. And we do have a goblin grenade. Our opponent knows about it, which makes it a little worse. But I mean, in theory, we hit our opponent for six, and we have the goblin grenade, so we're not that far away from winning on, like, turn four. Stomping rounds tapped. Come on, no more discard. No more discard, please. Opponent, ooh, that's good. Horian, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big scoops here for our new subscriber. We'll play the mountain. Kick a bushwhacker. Opponent probably has fatal push, maybe? Go attacking. We have, if they don't have Fatal Push, we have Lethal Bird. Oh, come on. No Fatal Push. No Fatal Push. Ugh. All right. So now we don't quite have Lethal Bird. Oh, so close. $2 donation from MTG Jugger J. My friend was a guy who played yesterday on Ponza. And you didn't know what he was on. Just wanted to let you know it was four color bring the light scape shift. Oh, well, thank you for the donation and for the information. Yeah, I was guessing it was a it was a scape shift type deck. Well, go attacking. Ooh, all right. Well, now we have lethal burn again. Goblin grenade hit you to three. Uh, is there any life gain we should be worried about? We could just pass. What life gain could they have? Feed the clan? Maybe. All right. I mean, if they have feed the clan, then I guess they got us and we lose. All right. No feed the clan. <laughs> oh, that's that is more where we want to be. Our opponent does get to be on the play here for game three. Yeah, you never know if someone could be playing a random life gain spell. Whew! All right, that was that was better for our eight whack. And yeah, I mean, I think that's the setup. Run it back, run it back, run it back. Oh yeah, we're we're whacking. All right, uh, no real one drops, but this hand has a lot of damage potential even without a one drop. And we have a lot of one drops we could draw. Blood Crypt. Ooh, down to 18. Opponent. Inquisition. Yeah, this hand's not bad. I would trade like a land for a one drop, but it is not a bad hand. Opponent's helping us out a little bit, taking, the, taking some damage. Although they're gonna save themselves some damage. Hard to know what they should take without knowing their hand. If they have a Fatal Push or a Bolt, they should probably take a Bushwhacker. Hmm. All right. Not taking a Bushwhacker. So they must just have a ton of spot removal. Ooh, and we drew another one. All right. Well, land go. Uh, I have the Jank Tank in my email. And I looked over a couple of the lists that someone sent me. But I did not go back through the whole Reddit post yet. Let's War Marshal. And pass the turn. Good way to fizzle Liliana activations. Oh, 
overgrown tomb. Untap down to 16. What? Ah, uh, Kitchen Finks? Kitchen Finks is pretty good against us. Yeah, War Marshal definitely helps with the Bushwhackers. So I think if our opponent has like a Kitchen Fangs, I think our best draw is just Legion's Lieutenant. Legion, whatever the one drop Legion thing is. There is a Goldfish Discord, yeah. Opponent passes. We're going to let War Marshal die. Hopefully draw a one drop. Well, that's kind of a one drop. Hmm. Yeah, awkward. Well, I guess we just have to run out Goblin Bushwhacker. Go attacking. Hit our opponent for six. All right, here comes some removal. Abrupt decay. All right, hit our opponent for four. That's fine. That's pretty slow removal. Play the mountain, pass the turn. If we draw a land, this is where the fourth land is super good. If we draw a land, we can pile driver bushwhacker, and that's a lot of damage. Ugh, Lily. Ugh, Liliana. All right, that's bad news. Well, there's a land, that's good news. So we get to play Pile Driver, Surge a Bushwhacker, Pump the Dorks. This just triggers whenever they attack, right? So this would, we'd hit for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, we finished our Ponza League, so we moved on. I don't really want to let this Liliana live. I think we're going to kill Liliana and hit our opponent for six. Down to six, pass the turn. I mean, we still should be able to win with Grenade here. And leaving Liliana alive, like if our opponent has a Sweeper or something, an Anger of the Gods, then all of a sudden this Liliana just ends the game. So I think that we're in a good enough position that it's better to play around. Eh, Collective Brutality, that's not bad. Well, now we need to draw any of our creatures. If we draw a creature, we win. Creature? Oh, no! Well, any non-reckless bushwhacker creature. <laughs> That's a one creature that doesn't get it done. Alright, well, we'll do it the bad way. Hit our opponent for five. We're still in pretty good shape here. I don't think that was a pun. Oh, uh, let me see. N Niffum. And our post scoops it up. Whoo, we got there. We got there. I don't think that was a pun. I think that was the correct line. If our opponent had anger the gods, we literally just lose to Liliana. Mirror Retriever combo. Ooh, we've played some Heartless Summoning Mirror Retriever action before. All right, up to 1-0. Oh. Can 8-Whack... <laughs> is is 8-Whack better than Ponza? Tune in tomorrow on Much A Brew About Nothing. <laughs> oh, I'm such an idiot. Oh my god. <laughs> I mean, maybe it was the putt. I don't know. We won though. We won. We won. Ponzo, we went we went three and two. We started off three and zero, oh, then we flooded out and lost a game. Then we got crushed by eight whack, and our league ended fast enough that we were like, "Yeah, maybe we'll do two leagues tonight." We can because eight whack is also super fast.
Did I miss a donation? Oh my god. I'm so sorry. $2 donation from Awesome Dude. Any PUBG after the stream tonight, Seth? If not, we can plan out a date where you'd have time. Also, how's it going? Oh, Awesome Dude. We gotta do it at some point. I don't know if uh, if tonight is the night, though. Oh, we're gonna keep this. It's another risky one. Thank you so much for the donation, though. You, uh, do you know Montreal? Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big Soup's here for our new subscriber. We do need two PUBG at some point. Windswept Eve for our opponent. Oh, come on. Just a land. A land, a land. All right. Lightning Bolt. Well, that's Foundry Street Denizen. This hand is so absurd if we draw a land. It is, like, so ridiculously good. Pass the turn. Have I ever tried military intelligence? I don't think outside of standard. I think we played it in standard at some point. Torzen, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big Soup's here for our new subscriber. <laughs> I do tend to say that a lot, don't I? I don't actually play... Oh, man, not Boggles. Voice of Resurgence. Ugh. Well, come on, lands. Foundry Street, Denizen. Ugh, these one-landers are killing us. That's killing us, I say. Pass the turn. Yeah, not feeling good about where we're at now. Losing die rolls, <laughs> keeping one landers. Some boggles play blue, but typically no, you're right. Eh, I don't think we should have attacked into that voice. I think we gotta build up a big board for bushwhacking. Knight, too big for... Oh man. Yeah, this is, this is the nightmare, again. Ugh. Our deck is not very good at cooperating with these land draws tonight. Savetto, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big Soup's here for our new subscriber. I don't know about playing Simeon Spirit Guide. It seems like you're giving up a threat to add more mana, and it feels risky to cut lands because then you're gonna get like only Simeon Spirit Guide hands. So I can appreciate, oh yeah, this is looking really bad. Um, I can appreciate the explosive potential of Simeon Spirit Guide in 8-Wac, but my guess would be that it's probably just worse than not running it, but I think it could be, I mean, you could definitely test it. Here comes nothing. Well, there's the land. Ugh. <sighs> Still not feeling even a bit good about where we're at. Play pile driver, pass the turn. Hello from the US, go fiesta. Pump the dorks. Yeah, we needed to draw, we needed, like we talked about before, this deck wants two to four lands. That's, that's what this deck needs. So when you get stuck on one or when you draw five, your odds of winning are really low. When you draw between two and four, your odds are pretty good in most matchups. Ponegrax. Yeah, Legion Loyalist is is probably what we need. Unfortunately, we can't also Bushwhacker in the same turn. And even Legion Loyalist, this knight is going to be so big. Jordan said, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Thanks for all the great content. Best stuff I ever made. Well, thank you so much. Big Soup's here for our new subscriber. Ponet, getting in with the night, uh, the voice. Yup. Yeah, I feel like this one's slipping. Slipping away. Just too slow on the draw. Well, there's more lands. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what we do here. If we attack, we just lose. That's the that's the big problem. Like we attack, our opponent eats our biggest thing. Eats our biggest thing. Uh, kills one of our things. Uh, I don't know. 
They also very likely have collected company. They didn't play anything. They passed with mana. So I feel like, I mean, maybe we just attack and hope that they have all lands in hand or something and they're not playing them. Because we probably don't win by not attacking. But we we don't win. I don't think we win no matter what we do here. We can keep trying to build up our board and then, like, I don't even know. Double whack? We can, like, Mog Fanatic, kill the birds. Oh, play the mountain. Ugh. Grenading Knight doesn't even kill it, though. I mean, I guess it would kill it if it blocked with something. Yeah, I mean, I guess we try to do something. I expect that this attack ends with us conceding, but I guess we give it a shot. We really needed a Legion Loyalist to force through our opponent's board. So, play Fnatic. Surge a Bushwhacker. Pump the dorks. And we just, I mean, we attack, see what happens. Attack with everything. Pump's pile driver. Here comes Collected Company. Well, maybe our opponent whiffs on Collected Company. That would be good voice okay just a voice what does that do oh we just don't get in much damage unfortunately opponents at 13 blocks blocks do we just straight up lose on the backswing yes six seven eight seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen 17, 18. Yeah, I think we just lose on the backswing here. Opponent gets the voice tokens. We lose our board. Yeah, I mean, that that is basically what we thought was going to have happen. Yeah, I don't think we live till next turn, though. Because these voice tokens are going to be massive. Yeah, opponent's that. And they also have, like, a path. Ugh. Galactic Company, very powerful, very powerful magic card. Uh, yeah, then we're giving up damage, though, and we don't necessarily have lethal next turn. Hollowed Fountain, tapped. Stuff dies. 5'10". Yeah, I mean, even if these 4, 8, 9, 10, 18, we're dead in, we're dead in all kinds of ways. Even if we kill the bird, we're dead. 8, 9, 10 plus 8 is 18. Voice token, super big. Yeah, we, I mean, for being stuck on one land, we actually put up a little bit of a fight. That was not our not our ideal draw. I don't think we change anything in this matchup. I think we just I think we just run it back. Yeah. Run it back. We're on the play this game, which is good. Mog Fanatic, our own token own, uh creature only giving them one token. Yeah, but then we would have gotten in then we would have only gotten in for less damage, and I don't think we'd have lethal. And we still would have been very low on life. I still don't think that would have worked. Graph Digger's Cage. I think on the play, we just want to kill our opponent. I think we just want to kill our opponent before they can Coco. On the draw, I think we'd be better than that. I don't think Blood Moon's that good because our opponent has Birds of Paradise and Noble High Arc. So it might, like, prevent some of their ability to, like, tutor with Knight of the Reliquary. But it's not going to keep them from casting spells. And it's another spell that doesn't really help us kill our opponent. I think on the play... Yeah, we had 8 points of burn, 
But I don't think our opponent would have been under eight if we didn't get in with Goblin uh, or Mog Fanatic, right? They would have only taken four on that attack. <laughs> well, we just kind of stumbled into playing 8-Whack here. All right, this hand's pretty good. This hand can kill our opponent pretty quickly. Foundry Street into Foundry Street Goblin Guide. Or Foundry Street, yeah. This hand's pretty good. Foundry Street, go. We have a bolt for a birds. Temple Garden untapped. And birds. Ugh, more mountains. Well, play the mountain. Play Goblin Guide. Go attacking. If our opponent blocks, that would be great. Birds of Paradise on top. Both the birds pass the turn. Ponza was good. Ooh, opponent kept a one lander? Okay, that's also good. All right, no more lands deck. Play Chieftain. Pump our stuff. Go attacking. Well, this is a pretty good non-Bushwhacker hand. Island on top. Opponent down to six. Down to six. What do they got? Island. Come on. Come on, let's... Why are you not playing Seismic Stomp in the board? Uh, ideally, we're just killing our opponent before there's a bunch of blockers. Ugh. Scavenging ooze. Come on, Dak. Not a land. Oh. Well, that makes it easy. Foundry Street. Pumps. Go attacking. Yeah, now we definitely have it. Goblin Grenade is the reason to play this deck. It is so good. And that's a turn four kill. The Ponza deck went well, although we fizzled in the end. Opponent blocks, blocks. Technically drops to one. Unfortunately for our opponent, Goblin Grenade, four or five. So Ponza started out really good. We started out three and oh, and then we lost to eight whack of all decks in the last round and then lost. I don't remember what our other loss was for, uh, it was two, but it was mostly because we flooded out like crazy. All right. So on the draw, I'm more likely to want a graph diggers cage and go down uh what are we cutting probably just a chieftain is usually what i cut probably just like that yeah we just threw this together at the last second we weren't really planning on playing we weren't really planning on playing eight wag tonight we were planning on playing ponza but it went quicker than we thought Ooh. All right, I like this hand. That is a lot of one drops. We just need bushwhackers. Windswept Heath, opponent, Temple Garden. Whoo, hurting themselves. Noble Hierarch, well, we can kill Noble Hierarch. Play the mountain. We got to bolt the birds, kill the Hierarch, pass the turn. See what our opponent has. Misty cracks it. And there's a voice. Voice is annoying. We'll play the mountain. Play Mog War Marshal. We're going to need some bushwhackers. Misty. Ah, uh, more voices. Pony cracks. Ponza, we started off 3-0, ended up... Ugh, so many voices. Ended up 3-2. And, and a Noble Hierarch. Ugh. Come on, Bushwhacker. Wow, opponent's getting aggro. We need a Bushwhacker to pump this Legion Loyalist, mostly. Opponent passes. War Marshal, gonna die. Bushwhacker? Ugh. Well... Goblin Guide, Goblin Guide, Goblin Guide, attack with everything, <laughs> uh, yup, 
How many lands does our opponent get? A oh, company on top? No! Oh, that's the last thing we wanted to see. Opponent blocks. Drops to 10. Yep, pass the turn. I'm not as pumped about Master 25 now that the full spoiler's out. Seems like high in flavor, but super hit or miss. Yeah, I think that's true. Uh, if we play Legion Loyalist, it just suicides into the voice of resurgence and we lose it. There's a Bushwhacker. So now we can Legion Loyalist. Still, this Collected Company is probably very bad news it does make it so this voice token can't block wow they're gonna company now oh come on no spell quellers oh jeez hmm Oh boy. Well, that was that was the perfect collected company. Play Denizen. Yeah, I think that I think that collected company hits ends it. Opponent can gain life with scavenging ooze now. Yeah, that was as good as it gets. Yeah, two goblin <laughs> grenades doesn't even do it cuz scavenging ooze is just going to gain our opponent uh, a roughly infinite amount of life. We draw more lands. Yeah, that's just... It's game. That does it. Yep. All right. Well, down to one and one with 8 whack, unfortunately. Oh, wow. Collected Company. Collected Company. Good for our opponent. And so far, we've been doing a really bad job of winning die rolls. What's the last land? Uh, I have no idea what the last land is. Last rare of M uh, M25 is Plague Wind. Are we sure that's the last one? I thought there were like four rares left. All right, we're on the play. All right, thankfully we actually, uh, <laughs> all right, Mulligan. <clears throat> Oh, God. So, if we scry into a land, this is, like, somewhat okay on the play? It's not good. Oh, man, we've been running super bad tonight. What do we do? Could you check out my Mono White Humans deck? Ooh, sweet. Yeah, I mean, I guess we try it. If we don't have a land, we're in kind of rough shape. Bushwhacker to the bottom. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, come on, land off the top on turn two. Or, man, this has been sad. I think in the league we 5 0'd, we probably did run somewhat above average, but good lord. This league we've been running pretty far below average. Well, we do get a land. So that helps. We can play a pile driver. Pass the turn. We'll see. We'll see. I mean, it could it could work. Wow, that is a lot of amulets. Gemstone mine. We have a new subscriber. Love is welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big scoops here for our new subscriber. Oh, what is our play? I mean, I guess we just War Marshal and get in for one. <laughs> and then try to get in a big hit next turn. I think if we're alive and we draw land, we could win next turn, maybe. Oh, boy. Yep. There's a bounce land. I think that's game. Yeah, I mean, there's not anything we can do about it. <laughs> if, if they have two amulets and the bounce land, like... It's not like our goblins can stop our opponent from comboing off. Explore, sure. 
emailed you this list a while back, but I had it on private. If it was on private, I definitely didn't see it. The Mono White Humans list is interesting. Kinda an interesting mix of aggro creatures and Elish Norns. But I guess if you have enough white mana symbols, Nykthos goes pretty good. Yeah, I mean, sometimes we can kill people on turn three. Our opponent's killing us on turn three. I mean, I guess we can just let them combo off and kill us. Dark Side of the Moon, kind of a red-black Blood Moon, Planewalker deck. I like it. Angrath is a spicy addition for modern. Blood Moon and Snaring Bridge, they're good friends. Ponza was 3-2. and two. Started off 3-0 and then succumbed down the end. A lot of variance in that deck. When it's good, it's really insane. And then when it's bad, it just draws infinite lands in a row. Yeah, I mean, that's modern. We're just, we're gold fishing. I'm tempted to just scoop. I guess we can let our opponent just keep doing their thing. I mean, this was a mulligan for our opponent, too. This is turn three, double amulet, double titan on the mulligan. I wish we were playing Ponza against this deck. There's no way this deck beats Ponza, I don't think. Blood Moon is, like, laughably good against this deck. Yeah, I mean, we're going to concede. Wrong ma We're hitting the very wrong matchups. Why does it 8 wag play fetches? Uh, it doesn't really have any reason to play fetches. So we can bring in our one Blood Moon. Maybe we can draw it. I don't know if... I mean, I guess we could bring in Artifact Hate to try to fight the Amulets. I don't know if that's worth it or not. I mean, our opponent, they definitely... They definitely are fine because they have multiple titans. Nah, I think this is. I think the amount of lands is pretty fine. You really only want two to a maximum of four. We've just kind of been getting bit on the wrong side of. the wrong side of the variance bug so far. Ah, uh, colorless lands are a really big price. I'm very, I'm scared. I'm even scared. I think like a cavern or two could be okay, but I'm even a little scared for that. But maybe a couple Muta Vaults would be okay. Uh, I think you're just seeing a lot of variants. I mean, last league we played, we 5-0'd and we didn't get mana screwed every time. So, I mean, we could pull out the, the calculator. That's the way to tell with these things. Because, I mean, you, it's we can tell what the, what the normal distribution is. So, I mean, 60 cards. Not 80 cards. 60 cards. Uh, drawing a 7-card opening hand... Er, 19 lands, 7 card opening hand, 2 lands, I mean, 2 or more lands 72% of the time, 1 land or uh, less 27% of the time, so I mean, we should be, we should be drawing at least 2 lands in our opener, a very, uh, like, Three out of every four games, but we just, uh, we haven't been doing that in this league. Um, maybe we just cut a Fnatic. I don't think they have very good ping targets. And I guess we can bring in a couple smashes. Uh, I don't know. Like, I don't know if that's a battle we win. Like, is killing Amulet enough to, uh, to actually... Oh, no. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's a high variance deck in the sense that, kind of like burn, you need a specific number of lands for the deck to actually work. Well, Mountain and Foundry Street Denizen. Pass the turn. <laughs> uh, yep. Moto heard us. They heard that we wanted more lands, and they were happy to oblige. Secure Tribe Scout land all right it is a land 
I think we gotta bolt this thing, unfortunately. Bolt the scout. Play goblin guide. Hit our opponent for four. Hope that they... Oh, Kozilek's return! Oh, dear. Oh, dear. That is a good sideboard card against us. Uh, Bloodbraid? Ponza was good. Oh, and Radiant Fountain. <laughs> oh, opponents got all the hate. They just got it all. Yeah, I mean, I guess we just attack. We can't really... Oh, uh, there's no getting around this. Uh, Reclamation Sage. Why in the world would they sideboard in? They must not have any idea what our deck is doing. Maybe they're, like, expecting Blood Moon. Gemstone Mine. Azusa. Plays a land. Well, now we gotta bolt Azusa. Yeah, this is this is not going to happen. Uh, cause we know our opponent has Kozilek's return, so we can't really commit anything else to the board, or, or else our opponent just rass our entire hand, and then we then we're dead. I mean, the question, <laughs> yeah, that's the problem. Is uh, is this Kozilek's return? Yeah, if we can get in a position to one shot our opponent, that would be sweet. So if we play the land, play Loyalist, play Bushwhacker, we hit for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. <sighs> That's not quite enough. We could attack this turn, but then if our opponent leaves up mana, Kozilek's return is an instant. It is an instant. If we could get our opponent in bolt range, then I would be pretty okay with just making the attack here, even if we get Wrath, and then we just hope that we... The problem is it's an instant, too, so our opponent can just pass, and then we can't play anything next turn, either? Oh, this is... This one's rough. Uh, if we got them into bolt range, I would be okay with emptying our hand i think but i think we're one short we hit for four five six seven eight nine ten eleven so we put our opponent to four and then since they have cold legs return goblin grenade isn't even an out we'd have to draw two more cards we'd have to draw a creature and a goblin grenade am i miscounting something it's 12 damage so we play two creatures. This is hitting for four. This hits for three. That's seven. This hits for two. Eight, nine, ten, eleven. I'm count. Okay, I think I'm counting it right. We're just going to. We're just going to attack. I think our best hope is that our opponent. Ugh, call me Carden. That even gives our opponent a chump blocker. I think our best hope is that our opponent does something else this turn that does not kill us. Uh, they still have the mana up. Hmm. Oh. I'll oh, play that amulet. Oh, they're not going to. Yeah. We draw more lands. Well, go attacking. I mean, we're kind of time walking our opponent a little bit. Opponent down and net. Nope. All right, here it comes. There's the Kozlik's return. Play the Mountain. Play Legion Loyalist. And I'm not sure what we can draw now. And our opponent's to Titan Mana. And they're gaining two more life here because they bounce that gain life land. Yup, up to 14. These are the matchups where having an extra Blood Moon in the sideboard. Yup. And we are just going to scoop it up. Yup, yup, yup. Well, so far, so rough skis. Oh, we've been on the... 
as good as we ran in our 5-0 Munch of Brew League, we are running equally bad tonight with 8 Whack. This is not Ponza. This is... This is, a. This is 8 Whack. It should say 8 Whack, I believe. All right, come on. We got to win these last... Uh, losing the die roll again. We got to win these last... Uh, all right. <laughs> our one land streak... Should happen one out of every four games. It's happening one out of every one game. But we got a lot of one drops. If we draw a single land, if we draw one land, this hand's really good. All right. Lane Line of Sanctity is not super relevant. Temple Garden. Oh, is this Boggles? It can't be Boggles, right? Well, Lightning Bolt. Oh, Foundry Street Denizen pass the turn. Come on, land! You could do it, Dak. You could do it. Yeah, I think uh, I think more Blood Moons in the sideboard might be worth it. I don't know what our opponent's doing. It's Boggles. Yup. And we Boggles is probably our worst matchup in modern. Even after sideboarding, we we will never beat Boggles. Hi, Enumbra. I think it's correct to play Foundry Street first. Oh, this is this is rough. This is super rough. Yeah, this this is our legit worst matchup in the whole format. Ah, uh, yeah, we were ponzing at first. You got me back into MTG as a game, not only a format in ATW else. Just finished building Eldrazi and Taxes in paper. The chat keeps going. Inspired me, wanted to say thank you. Oh, well, awesome. Thank you, Magnetic Snowy. Thank you for the kind words. Um, all right, so. <laughs> Goblin Guide. Pumps. Legion Loyalist. I mean, there's a chance we can win if our opponent doesn't have a lifelink aura. If our opponent has a lifelink aura, it's really hard to win. That's, I mean, we just got to hope they run bad. To say that it's unwinnable isn't true, but it's, uh, all right. Spirit Dancer. That actually turns on our lightning bolt. Man. All right. We could steal this if our opponent doesn't have anything else. Kirby to girl. Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big Soup's here for our new subscriber. Well, that works out. We get to Lightning Bolt the Spirit Dancer. Oh, do we just have to all out attack? We could Goblin Guide here. I think we got a Bolt. Bolt the Spirit Dancer. Kick a Bushwhacker. This lets us attack with everything. It doesn't let us kill the Slippery Boggle because of the Hyena Umbra. But we still get to attack. See what our opponent has on top. Come on, no lifelink. Nothing with lifelink. Please? No. Uh, Windswept Teeth. Well, that doesn't have lifelink. Uh, we already played a Ponza League, so since the League went quick, we're just wrapping up with a little bit of 8-Whack uh, action. Although, it hasn't went that well for us tonight with 8-Whack. It went better with Ponza. <laughs> uh, so much attacking. This deck is so sweet. I feel like we just have not a... Uh... Oh, no. No blocks? Oh, that's a bad sign. That probably means Daybreak Coronet or something. And Daybreak Coronet means life is super sad. Forest. Come on. No, no Coronet. Spirit Dancer. That's a, an odd choice. Spider Umbra. Wow. Wow, we are close to winning here. Do we win here? We need a, a Bushwhacker? War Marshal. So if we had... Opponent blocks here. Blocks here. Takes... Uh, one... 
two, three, four. We it doesn't actually kill the dancer though, unfortunately. This uh this totem armor though means it just becomes a zero two. Hey, see you, Death Worlds. We'll be back on Tuesday with another one. Uh, we can't target our opponent because of this ley line of sanctity. Our opponent has hexproof. I mean, we can grenade. Yes, we can grenade the this, but it doesn't kill it. It just it just takes away this totem armor. So we can do that. Yeah. I guess that's. <sighs> Magwar Marshal. Pumps. Oh, this is going to be close. Pumps, pumps. Pumps. Goblin Grenade, the Spirit Dancer. Sacking War Marshal. Pumps. And then I guess uh, we attack. Yeah, I mean, I guess we attack. Yeah. I mean, go attacking. See what our opponent has on top. First strike, trample. Path to exile on top. That's less scary than some other options. We might actually be sneaking this out. Opponent blocks Foundry Street. Oh boy. All right. Staying alive. And this gets rid of the Hyena Umbra, which means that Daybreak Coronet is no longer an out. And with a pass on top, our opponent scoops it up. Oh boy. Well, this means we actually have a chance to beat Boggles, because Boggles does lose to itself sometime. It does lose to itself sometime. So, that was a mistake. Two trample damage. I think that was... Oh, yeah, grenade is a sorcery. Yeah, I mean, the grenade still worked out. Wow. Reality hemorrhage. That doesn't do anything. Shattering spree. It's all auras. Yeah, I don't know if any of this stuff does, <laughs> does anything. I mean, Blood Moon is a little slow. I guess we could Blood Moon him. I guess we we could Blood Moon. Mog Fanatic is not very good in this matchup. It doesn't do anything. So we can bring in a Blood Moon over Mog Fanatic. Rabble Master. It makes our goblins attack. Can that be a negative against this deck? I mean, I guess if they have a Daybreak Cornet on something, we're just not winning, period. So sure. We'll go down two Fanatics, go up a Chieftain and a Rabble Master. Let's try it like that. Skullcrack doesn't get around Leyline, although maybe it's still worth bringing in because it does stop Lifelink for a turn. I mean, does Skullcrack get around Leyline? Does it not target? Let me, I'm going to have to read Skullcrack again. Yeah, it doesn't, we could damage ourselves if they had Leyline. So we could target ourselves to fizzle, to fizzle life gain. Well, there's a boggle. The question, maybe it's worth it. I don't know if stopping one, of, maybe it's worth it. I guess it's probably worth it. There's an Umbra, number one. I guess fizzling one turn of lifelink is probably still better than the Mog Fanatic. Opponent gets in. If we draw a land and get to Blood Moon, that is a way to jank out this game. There's a land. Well, we got a chance. Get in with Foundry Street. This is a big turn. If our opponent draws something this turn, like a Daybreak Coronet, land Daybreak Coronet, we're probably in trouble. Reality Hemorrhage is a way to answer core 
Firewalker. Ooh, there's Spirit Link. All right, this is going to be interesting. They have the Life Link, but we have the Blood Moon. <laughs> uh, we might be able to win through this. They're gaining life, yes. But we're going to stop them from ever casting spells. Hopefully, until they draw a basic. Play the Blood Moon. Our one of Blood Moon. Yeah, we might still be okay even with the Spirit Link out. Get in with Foundry Street. Because now we can just like... Chieftain, then Bolt, Bushwhacker, Bolt, Bushwhacker. That could probably race our opponent gaining two life a turn. Hopefully. Opponent gets in. Because we're going to be deal uh, dealing massive chunks of damage here. Opponent really needs to draw basic. Well, Goblin Chieftain. Or we can just keep playing Chieftains. Pumps Foundry Street. I think we're winning. Oh, man. Boggles is such a bad matchup. It's so bad. It's so bad. I mean, they're never going to play a ley line this game. They only have one land, and yeah, there's no way ley line's coming down now. Opponent getting in. I can't believe we're going to beat Boggles. We The kids could still be eating from 8 whack. It's possible. Opponent hits us. Yup. Well, I think Loyalist Bushwhacker is better than chieftain here so loyalist surge of bushwhacker this is a lot of damage many points of damage this deck just deals so much damage hit our opponent they've been gaining life steadily it does not matter hit our opponent down to five and i think that does it i think that just does it whoo eight whack we might wow oh wow i can't believe we won that matchup well, this is it, boys and girls. We could this is like reverse Ponza. We started out we started out great with Ponza and fizzled at the end. With 8 whack, we won our first round, but then we basically started out bad, and now we got a chance. We got a chance for the 3-2 finish and one more treasure chest added to the coffers. Uh, this has been a fun one. I mean, we aren't winning every round, but we're playing goblins. We're blowing up lads. The kids are eating little snacks here and there. Yeah, I can't believe we beat Boggles. I really cannot. Uh, the Ponza list is actually still the active one in the bot. Because I did not update it to, to goblins. To 8 whack. Yeah, that Blood Moon, one of Blood Moon, we would have definitely lost. I guess we got a little lucky there. I definitely think we should have more Blood Moons in the sideboard. Some of the sideboard cards in this deck, we didn't really update it because I wasn't planning on... Ooh, on the play? I wasn't really planning... Ugh. Ugh. All right, well, so many one-landers. I swear to God, we looked up the numbers. We actually pulled out the hypergeometric calculator and... I swear to God, <laughs> this should happen 27.3% of the time. <laughs> but it's happening, like, way more than that. Jund again? Where can I find a non-budget list of mono green land destruction? Uh, if you go to the Budget Magic article, there is a non-budget list. Zach Elsick's non-budget list is in that article, too. Come on, land! You can do it, Moto. You can do it, deck. Opponent taking some damage here is good for us. They probably take our goblin guide, I would guess. Yep. Well, come on, land. Come on, land. It's a land. All right. Well, kick a bushwhacker. Hit our opponent for five. I mean, even just these starts, they're pretty good. Like, our opponent's down to 12 on turn two. Forest. Come on, land. Well, all right. Play more uh, Magor Marshall. We really want Land Bolt Kick Bushwhacker. That's just game over, I think. Ponza, we ended up 3-2. Started 3-0 and then fizzled to 3-2. Get in. 4-4. Four, four. All right, there's Abrupt Decay. Oh, we're like a Bushwhacker away. A Bushwhacker away. Yeah, War Marshal's not bad. Temple Garden down to nine. What, they have Lingering Souls? Scavenging Ooze. Oh, come on, land. Land. Yeah, War Marshal gonna die. Oh, we need a land. Yes! Oh, my goodness. Uh, 
Bolt phase to six. Bolt ooze. Yeah, let's just bolt ooze. This is safer for fatal pushes. It doesn't let our opponent gain life. Go attacking. Yeah, opponent should have left up green mana. There's the fatal push. Opponent down to three, past the turn. Uh, I think it's actually pretty, pretty good. Oh, come on, one mana. War Marshal. Hmm. <laughs> what do we do? What do we do? Opponent blocks, blocks, goes to two. Uh, Wacker, we don't win. We can't surge it here. Mog pass leads to just more spirits, though. All right. Yeah, maybe Mog pass is fine. Yeah, we'll pass. I don't know. It doesn't bushwhack, though. We do that. We, we have two goblins. We have two bushwhackers. Opponent blocks bushwhacker. Blocks bushwhacker. Goes to one. So it's still not it's still not lethal. If we draw a one drop here, Legion Loyalist is the best, but War Marshal Attack 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 Attack. Huh. If we draw one drop and can surge a bushwhacker. One, two, then we win. Uh, do we pay for this? Uh, I enjoy this deck. Come on, one drop. All right, that... <laughs> uh, that's not traditional, but it'll work. Cast, surge, attack. All right, we got there. Casting the bushwhacker without bushwhacking. <laughs> oh, all right. All right. We got there. We got there. Oh, it all comes down to this. It all comes down to this. We got to win this one. Uh, our opponent was getting a lot of basic lands, but I think we're still going to bring in the blood moon and go down one mog fanatic. I, well, hmm. Yeah, let's go down one Mog Fanatic. Try it like that. Try it like that. This is for the chest. We need one more win. We need one more win. We have not... I think I realized why we haven't been doing crazy things this game is we haven't drawn Pile Driver. We even added the fourth Pile Driver. And we just have not had... We just have not had a lot of Pile Driver draws. In Pile Driver, in the games we played for the League, oh man, that is... That is the card. <laughs> Opponent picked kind of the worst number for explosives with our hand. We have all zeros and twos. <laughs> they just had to run out the explosives on one. That is the <laughs> somehow the worst number. We cut the goblin heel cutter for the for the pile driver. Now oh, there's a one. Well, play War Marshal. Get in with Fnatic. I think Ramana Bruins is actually pretty bad, personally. Um, so the thing about this deck, my theory on Ramana Bruins is paying life for no reason feels bad, and... It's really hard for me to envision games where we get up to five lands to activate Ramen on Bruins and two damage is relevant. Usually if we get to five lands, we're either winning right that second with a huge attack or we're not winning that game. So it's really hard for me to... It's got to have been 
so infrequently where that would be important that I think that the life you lose against, like, burn or something is actually... Ugh. Yeah, brutality. Wow, discarding Liliana. Why don't they just have a million Lilianas? Well, come on. Land for Chieftain, I think, is what we want. War Marshal dies. Well, let's play Pile Driver. Get in. At least Pile Driver doesn't die to Liliana. Opponent sounded two cards in hand. Yeah, that is. Oh, I, oh, they just don't have the land. Oh boy, we're doing it. We're doing it. We are doing it. Um. Yeah, let's just go attacking. Make our opponent do something. All right, there's abrupt decay. Opponent takes two. Two cards in hand. I'll play another pile driver past the turn. Opponent does not draw land. We draw Mog Fanatic. Well, go attacking. I think we're a better two land deck than our opponent. Man, they do have a lot of removal though. Ultimate price. Well, play Mog War Marshal. We need one more land to start lording and bushwhacking for the win. Marsh Flats cracks it. Opponent's far enough down now that I don't think Liliana's just game over. It's more just an annoyance. Lingering Souls. Well, that's what Legion Loyalist is for. Land? Land for the win? It would be so good. Oh, it's a land. All right. That's what we wanted. Uh, so now we will Legion Loyalist. Surge of Bushwhacker. Opponent can't block. Go attacking. Hit our opponent. Not quite lethal, but pretty close. Legion Loyalist, our secret sauce for beating Lingering Souls. I think we could actually double Fanatic Ping. Fanatic Ping, Fanatic Ping, and that should be lethal. Whoo! Whoo! All right, opponent, what do you got? What do you got? Oh, we, we pulled it out. We started off rough, but I think we're going to finish this with a winning record. The deck is super sweet. Like, we saw the bad variants, and our bonus scoops it up. All right, well, we we did not get a 5-0, but we got the win. We ended up 3-2, so we're just 3-2-ing our way through our leagues tonight. 3-2 with Ponza, Bloodbraid Ponza. 3-2 with Bushwhacker. We managed to play two leagues in our three-hour stream. Uh, what about Goblin King and Blood Moon in the sideboard? Uh, yeah, I mean... I guess that's a cool way to get through uh, creatures. I kind of like that idea. It's kind of merfolky. Well, I mean, let's open one more treasure chest. <laughs> we're, we're earning them one at a time. But maybe this is the one. Maybe this is the one that has something great. So our last treasure chest of the night. What do we get? What do we get? Ooh, overgrown tomb. I don't think it's worth that much. It's exciting, but overgrown tomb from... Return to Ravnica. Uh, 1.72. Eh, it's not bad, though. I actually have to go through and sell fetch lands because when I build decks, I want to use the original ones. So it clutters up my collection. So I'm going to have to go, gonna go sell them. But not bad, not bad. Also, Thundering Spineback. Vanquish the Week. Huh. I don't think we're going to be able to Momir tonight. Our double leagues. Our double leagues was, uh, I think that's going to be be all for this evening. Two leagues in Momir, just, that would be too much. <laughs> oh, man. Jeez. Well, we got it two leagues. I think for the first time ever we've played two full leagues. I keep clicking the wrong thing and pulling up uh, that page. But next week, next week we'll try to make sure that Momir is at the top of the list. Uh, I don't think I can tonight, awesome dude, but soon. We gotta figure it out. Uh, we didn't draw we didn't draw our pile drivers, so that made it a little bit hard to tell, but I think I do like the four pile dri drivers. We just didn't draw them that often. Uh, so I think everyone, I think that's gonna bring us to the end for tonight. Uh, I don't think we can mow mirror. Oh, uh, but next week we'll try to play a fast deck to make sure we get in some Omir. 
We uh we got in two leagues though, so that's the good news. So anyway, everyone. Thank you so much for hanging out. Let's do some reminders on the way out the door. If you want to go watch our two leagues again, you can find them on the MTG Goldfish Replay YouTube. On the normal YouTube, against the odds last night was pretty sweet. Playing some Starfield Paradox Commander Clash. We got uh, Dubious Champion on Much Approved this weekend. Budget Magic on Monday. All that stuff. Also, the merch page with tokens and t-shirts and playmats. Super awesome. Uh, so anyway, big thanks to all of you. You are amazing. Uh, it was fun. I'm glad we got to do two leagues. Thank you for the donations and the subscriptions and all that stuff. So enjoy the rest of Masters 25 spoilers. Don't forget Magic Online Championship tomorrow if you're looking for some modern action. And yeah, we'll be back on Tuesday with another one. So until then, have a wonderful weekend. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You all are super amazing. I love you all. Have a good weekend, and I will see you on Tuesday.